maybe, hopefully. Fingies crossed. I did fill my water cup, so uh, we, we should be able to get started. So let's get started. Gah! No! Damn it, I spent absolutely bloody ages making the camera angle work correctly, and it has betrayed me because it won't stay here, and it keeps wanting to drift, and I don't know how to get it to stop drifting because no matter what I do, it just keeps drifting. I think this is about as good as it's going to get. Is it still drifting? It's still drifting. Literally, I have done, I have adjusted every piece of this stupid arm. I have loosened, I have tightened, I have changed, and it keeps just drifting back to, you can see the ink pots back there. Increasingly more of them as time goes by. <laughs> and that's about it. Anyways, hey Silly, welcome in. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. And hello Neo as well. And hello Samantha. Hi everybody. Sorry for the uh, initial, uh... But I literally, so my, um, my camera should be connected by a USB cable and decided to connect to, um, by the Wi-Fi instead. Oh no. Okay. Well, the picture's gone. So let me just get onto technical difficulties for a minute. Ah, oh, heck. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that it was, uh, not accidentally working via my, my phone signal or something. And... Now it's decided that it just doesn't want to, uh, it just isn't, didn't want to work at all. Okay, now it's connected via the USB. However, it also wants to be in portrait, which is incorrect. Can I get you to just, just hold in place, please, for once. Okay, I think we have it. I think we have the camera angle back. So uh, let's let's check on it. Uh, yeah, okay, we've got the camera. It's a little bit on the piss. It's a little not quite level, so I'm actually having to make the uh, make the mat not quite level in real life, so it doesn't look like super wiggity wonky. But I think we'll be okay. Look, it's a kakapo. <laughs> and I heck and love these birds. I think they're so stinking cute, and they're lovely, and um, I, I support their thriving and all that. Apparently your stream setup is rebelling over the lack of books, says Samantha. Oh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was an ordeal. And when I say ordeal, I mean, it was a super fun ordeal. <laughs> so like, don't worry about it. But, uh, but anyways, yeah. Um, we're painting something other than books today. I hope that's okay with everyone. I hope that's all right. I really do. I know it's been, it's been a while that this has kind of become book stream and I don't know if that's what people are here for now. Um, and then changing the content means that no one's here anymore <laughs> as anyone who's tried to buck the YouTube algorithm will know. Anyways. Um, but yeah, hope you're having good Thursdays. Hello, Tom. Welcome in. Hello. Hello. Hope you're having a lovely Thursday as well. It's wonderful to see you. Welcome on in. I see the camera has drifted again and you can see all of these. I mean, it doesn't really matter that you can see the ink bottles. Most importantly, I want you to see what I'm painting. And my camera, my, my camera, do the, the doodah, the tripod. It's not a tripod. It's a weird, it's a bendy thing that, that connects to the bookshelves over there. Um, and has a bunch of like different joints that, that you can adjust the angles of it. Um, uh, anyways, it's rebelling against me, basically. <laughs> I had, I had it set up at, like, the perfect angle such that all I had to do was, like, move it down so that it was, like, you know, not, not in the way when I'm not streaming. Um, and then it decided, actually, we're not gonna, we're not gonna hold steady at an angle that you want. We're just gonna continuously drift slightly backwards so that you can always see these, these little ink pots behind. <sighs> it's so annoying. Do you use the numbers on the green mat a lot? Asks Tom. I never do. I literally never do. The, the mat just came with them. It is just a surface for doing, doing stuff. Um, but yeah, camera mount drift is a huge issue. <laughs> It's very annoying. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Turn up. Hello. Welcome in. How are you doing? Wonderful to see you. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, so it says we like watching verbs. It's the pastime that brings us so much joy. I 
I am so blessed with a neighborhood that is full of birds. They're very noisy right now, and I just love it. I go outside, I'm waiting for the bus, and there's just, there's little, there's little cheap, cheap noises, there's little whistly sounds, there's little tweet tweets and caw caws and coo coos and all of the other sounds that birds make. It just, it makes us so happy to see it. Brings me so much joy. The little sparrows going do 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 bouncing around on the lawns. The little uh the little magpies hanging out. The little the the pigeons are very romantic at the moment. I have had to avert my gaze more than once. When I look up I see a pigeon and I'm like, oh no, they're making out with another pigeon. That is not my business. I I do not want to intrude upon your private moment. I'm sorry, excuse me. And that's personal. <laughs> Ah, uh, but you love to see it. Uh, or at least I do anyways. Uh, the, the, the red kites that sort of circle menacingly up in the air have been, have been descending more lately. Uh, and I do worry for the smaller birds. I know it's a circle of life, yada, 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 but still, I don't know. Have you considered corn chicken? Because it's really good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Hello, Lino, Oi, Oi, Savaloy's T2. Welcome in. How are you doing? It is wonderful to see you. Um, Tom says, remember, birds watch us back. And that's why I always say hello. Because I think it's polite. I see a magpie, I say hello, Mr. Magpie. I see a pigeon, I say hello, Mr. Pigeon. I see... Uh, a pied wagtail and I am too overcome with joy and delight and just probably just going and flapping my hands with, with, with happiness to actually say or do anything meaningful <laughs> in terms of greeting the pied wagtail and every once in a while every once in a while I um every once in a while I will see a little bobbin they're quite elusive little creatures, the bobbins, but my goodness, they're precious. The little do, 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 little spheres with orange tummies. I love it. Anyways. <laughs> I do wonder if the birds delight me so in part because they're, they're still kind of... A lot of the birds in this country are still kind of a novelty to me because they're not the same birds that they had in the country that I spent the first three quarters of my life to date in. Um... So, so I'm just like, oh, yes, you're, you're a bird that lives here. Oh, that's neat. You know, it's just, I love them so much. Anyways. Um, oh my pigeon love is in the air. I know fanning myself. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> Those who watch birds should be aware, says Samantha. For as you gaze upon the burbs, the burbs also gaze up into you. Indeed, indeed. And that's why I always try and dress up a little bit more nicely when I go out. Cause I don't want the birds to think that I'm the pajama wearing slob that I am. <laughs> uh, kites are most probably looking for carrion being scavengers. Interesting. 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 They do, they do fly around. You don't see them land on the ground very often more, you know, I, it's rare that I will see a kite land in the neighborhood, but usually if I do, it's at the top of a very big, big boy tree. Um, I, do not relish the possibility of ever having to move somewhere that isn't quite so foresty as my the for, the literal enchanted forest I live in. But the the downside of the enchanted forest I live in is it turns out the enchanted forest is really expensive to live in. So we're probably going to have to move at some point because I have no money. Anyways, if you dress drably, the bird <laughs> if you dress drably, the birds will probably just think you're female. I mean. I do, you know, there's a, there's a subtlety to the plumage of some female birds compared to their outlandish boy counterparts. Um, but personally, I think they're lovely. But then one of my favorite colors is a nice brown, so, you know. <laughs> uh, Tom says, Emerald the cat loves watching birds so much I installed a bird feeder at the window. <gasps> Oh, that's so nice. I wish I could have a bird feeder. That would be rad. I'm just, um, I'm just taking this. So, so that this paper is still on the watercolor block that it came on. So I need to, um, I need to just, uh, 
just extricate it from that. And I'm just I'm just using the slightly sort of like angled end of this paintbrush. You do not want to use a knife for this. You don't want you like I've got I've got if I reach over here, pardon my arm. If I reach over here, I do have like an exacto knife. You do not want to eat now is you know, it's nice and sharp, so it'll do it, but you also run the risk of like ripping the paper in so doing. So you want something that's like flat but blunt, which is why something like this works much better for uh, a watercolor block type situation such as this one. This is a stupid painting because I just wanted to paint a bird. I spent, what, like a cumulative month on that one bookshop. I wanted to do something a little bit, a little less complicated this time, just a, just a smidge. Um, I find female pheasants much more appealing than male ones. Fair enough. Personally, personally, I like all genders of bird. Um, but, uh... I can't, I can't think, I can't think what the difference are, is are in terms of plumage of, of, of the pheasants and the other pheasants at the moment, so might have to, also male pheasants are absolute dicks. Well then, I mean, that'll, that'll do it, Lino. In that case, I tend, I tend to find kind people and that includes creatures more appealing than unkind people. Um... But yeah, there was, I had a bit, I had a bit of a event at my moderator slash spouse yesterday out of, of a story that I'd heard of a, a woman who approached, um, uh, an actor who's quite famous in like a public place just to be like, hi, thanks for the, keep up the good work. Have a nice day. And the actor was quite, um, responded quite sort of like, in a rudely dismissive way. And, and I felt, and, and people were really just like dragging this woman being like, well, she should have known better than to talk to that person. Cause they don't want a privacy and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, yes, but also that doesn't, I don't know. I just feel like it doesn't entitle you to be a jerk. And it made me feel sad that, that people were kind of just piling on in that way. Um, cause I don't know, per, like for, for me anyways, it, do, it doesn't take any more amount of effort to just say like, you know, if you're not interested in like having like a, a chat or an interaction, just being like, you know, like, thanks, but now's not a good time or something like that rather than just being like rude. You know what I mean? Um, but that is... I asked, I asked my partner, I'm like, am I just be, am I just a little too autistic to understand? Um, and I think, I think I might be anyways. Oh, oh I see. Lino was thinking of peacocks. Well, yes, indeed. <laughs> They're kind of show offs. Boy peacocks. I don't, I haven't, I haven't met very many peahens, so I don't know. I don't know what their person, I mean, you know, every bird is different. Every bird is a different person. I'm rambling and I don't know why. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee and just shut up. Before I alienate the entire internet by being bad and wrong. I don't know. Anyways, um, I've realized that my pencil and eraser are not in the room and there are some little bits of the sketch that I just want to clean up before I actually paint onto this. So peacocks will fight a taxi given a chance i'm gonna put it out there that i don't think the peacocks are gonna win that interaction i think they should maybe just dial it back a little bit in that case like just a smidge <laughs> uh tom wants to know what colors i'm going to do well the kakapo is kind of green with some like yellowy bit so probably probably quite a bit in the sort of yellow green family especially with like the forest behind being sort of greens and browns so it's gonna be very very fresh very springtime very objectively one of the best birds to ever exist one moment please i'll brb right back In other news, <laughs> I don't know, can taxis even fan out their tails? You know what? I think they're kind of shy about it, but I'm sure, 
I'm sure maybe when, when no one's looking, when they're feeling a little bit, you know, safe and like they're not going to be judged, maybe then. I know not of whence I speak. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyways. Ta-da! I said ta-da like I was done, and then I kept going. <laughs> oh, no. Remind me to install a tail on my car. <laughs> When I next to her, oh my god, Tom, yes, do it. Just, just a huge fan tail. There we go. Yay. Uh, I did, I did a tiny painting with a fan tail in it recently. That was a lot of fun. I want to, can I show, do I have a photo of that? Because it's not in the room and I don't want to go looking for it. But, but I'm not sure I've got, I've got it saved to this device. Question mark. Oh, I do. I do, in fact. Get a load of this low-res zoom of a super tiny fantail. Ta-da! Considering, in, in, in context, it is very teeny tiny, so I was quite happy with the way that that turned out. I'm sure I'll post it at some point. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Anyways, I mean, here it is. Okay, here's here's the incomplete piece that it comes from. And there's the fantail. It's teensy. <laughs> as if, as if I've never done anything with absurdly tiny details before. Um, Samantha says, kind of feels like it defeats the point of fanning out one's tails in the display if you only do it when no one's looking. Well, maybe you're just doing it for yourself. Maybe the display is like an, just an act of like self knowledge. I don't know. It's like having the power to turn invisible only when no one is looking at you. I mean, that's kind of how I feel a lot of the time just in my life. Um, but it's not so much a power as being five feet tall and not knowing how to speak up in social situations. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Hurrah. This is my last serving of buttermint tea. I was saving it, but I have on slightly good authority that this limited edition tea is making a comeback, so I feel okay drinking it. Mmm. It good. Um, I've taken out the Inktense paint pan set again for this. I've got these beautiful, like, super granulating watercolors that I really want to try out, but I need, I feel like because they're quite unusual, I want to have, like, the right project for it. And, um, I don't know what project that should be yet, so I keep putting off using, I was so excited to buy these, and then I'm like, well, what am I going to do with them? I don't know. <sighs> Is that not, is that not the life of a person what, what has art supplies is to just, to buy a thing without a specific project in mind and then never find a project that is the right project to use it. <laughs> like that's just, that's just having, I, you know, I, I, I art as parts of a vocation, but I have a hobby that is buying art supplies. <laughs> They're not necessarily... 100% connected. I'm so sorry. I need to mute for just a second. That's better. Okay. What does a forest look like? I haven't sketched in or thought about the background to this piece like at all, which is probably a mistake. But on the other hand, I do have kind of a reference. In as much as I have based, <laughs> I have based this, this beautiful bird on the bird that I, um, that I adopted. And, um, as part of the, like, donate to, um, 
Kakapo recovery sort of annual scheme that they do. They let you adopt a bird and you get an adoption certificate and you get a little plush of the bird and it's so cute. And it's way larger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's a big boy and it's very cuddly and adorable and I love it very much. Um... And I'm going to masking fluid this off and do, like, most of the background first, I think. <sighs> Sorry for the shaky noises. Sorry for the shaky noises. Silly, thank you very much for a seven-stream steak. Holy heck, that is so many steaks. That is so many steaks. We should... Somebody fire up the grill. Let's go... Oh, hello? I hear noises. There's someone in the house besides me. It's my moderator slash spouse. Hey, sunshine! Hey. Welcome home. Okay. Okay. Anyways. I am going to use my nasty brush and do some masking fluiding. You need a nasty bus the you need a nasty brush for uh for masking fluid because it will ruin your brushes. Uh Lino says hello, sunshine. He says hi. Anyways, I think he had some, I think he had a, a, a chore he wanted to attend to before properly, like, coming into the house. So I will greet him when he's back. Anyways, masking fluid for when you're autistic, but now you're going to have to deal with the holistics for a while. Oh my god, Samantha, that is too much of a mood. That is too much of a mood. Good old masking fluid. I know it well. I was unwittingly drinking it for years. Anyways. Tra la la. Um, but yeah, I want to... I want to just be able to be a little bit loose with the background without worrying about sort of covering up parts of the bird that I don't... I don't want to accidentally... I don't... I don't want the background to be in front of the bird because then it's going to be really confusing. It's going to be like that one Magritte painting that they turned into a Styx album cover. You know the one. And if you don't know the one, uh, actually, listen, if you don't know the one, hold up, hold up. Cause it's, it's, it's really something. <laughs> um, Man, I listened to this record a lot when I was in my teens. Um, what does that say about me? Oh, oh, who knows? I don't. Anyways, this, oh god, this album cover is weird! I had forgotten how weird this album cover was. I just want you to brace yourselves for how weird this album cover is, and the fact that you're going to have to look at my Instagram for a couple seconds first, because uh, that is how... That is how the display works on the stream. Um, that's my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, uh, feel free to do that. I post periodically, not as regularly as I probably should. Here's what some of my work looks like when it's done. Brace yourselves. This, this is, this is the Sticks album cover. Ah! Ha ha ha! It's so weird. I'd forgotten how weird it is. It's very weird. There was a time in the world where culturally we thought this was normal. Hey, sunshine. Wait, wait, wait. Huggies. Mm, hello. Hello. Yeah. Missed you. Miss you too. Glad you're home. I'm painting a bird today. Burp. Burp. Okay, let's stop looking at that forever and ever, shall we? <laughs> Anyways, I'm a big fan of the paintings of Magritte. They don't normally look that 70s prog rock, I promise. Um, but, uh, but they are quite fun. I did visit a Magritte painting in, in an art gallery once. I was very excited. It was, I mean, in fairness, that one was literally just a painting of a big rock. It wasn't, I don't think it was one of the more famous sort of meaningful ones that they use as a talking point in cultural studies 101 lectures um but you know as a fan it was still pretty exciting i 
I don't think anyone would ever get that excited about being in the presence of one of my paintings. This might be partially because my paintings are very small. And also because, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like we don't value artists that much these days. We just look at it on Instagram and go, huh. Okay. And then we move on with our lives. Uh, which is why I haven't posted that one painting of the bookshop yet that took me a cumulative month to make because I will feel sad. <laughs> Samantha says, Pa, I have two of your paintings and I was very excited when they arrived. Oh, I'm so glad you like them, though. I really, really am. That's nice. That's very kind. Um, incidentally, in case anyone's curious, I do have prints and stickers and stuff in my shop, which is there. Anyways. This guy is pretty much masked off, as I would like it to be. But I noticed there was a little bit of bleed out here. Where parts that are not the tail got masking fluid on them, so I might just try and try and maneuver that. Oh no, I just I just got rid of so okay, I'm just gonna have to repaint over that section, I think. Well that's fine. Mm. The rest of it's perfect, so that's fine. Anyways. Um I was I was on the fence about what what paints I wanted to use for this. But I figure it's probably it's probably easiest to use fairly fairly straightforward paints. I think I'll I'll save the super granulating paints for when I'm doing like a landscapey piece, I think. I think it'll work better in that sort of context. Cause I'm gonna the the paints are granulating, but I'm gonna wanna get a little bit granular when it comes to like the feathery textures here, and I don't know whether or not the um the weird, like, granular texture slash color shift of the granulating paints is going to, uh, interact badly with trying to do, like, you know, get quite sort of refinement in, in getting, like, the texture of the different types of plumage, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of interesting textures going on in the plumage of these beautiful creatures who are perfect in every way and they're super cute and they walk around on their little feet like doot 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 and I love them very much. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's something, there's something I find very relatable about a flightless bird. I'm just like, aw. You, you can't do what a lot of people consider to be a basic bird thing, but that doesn't mean you're not good. You're awesome. Look at you. You're adorable. I relate to that. Anyways, not the adorable part, but the rest of it. Here's a paintbrush. Shall I use this one for the back? Or should I maybe start with this? I'll start with this one, I think. I'll start with this one, I reckon. Just to lay down some, like, basic background colors. Wow, we are, like, 35 minutes into the stream, and I am just now, just now, contemplating actually putting paint on the canvas that is all right then sure <laughs> at least I am at least I am putting paint down that's you know that's progress anyways um I'm gonna start with a little I just oh silly says I just ordered a rain world monk plushie they just restocked them <gasps> cute Oh, that's awesome. I love that for you. Hell yeah. Okay, which one is... I think this This is more of a skyish blue, but this blue is deceptive because for some reason on here it looks really, really light, but whenever I use it, it's actually quite... The, the paint pan itself is actually surprisingly pigmented, so I probably don't want to use too much of it. Because I don't want it to feel... I don't want it to feel crazy with the blueness. Oh, God, I thought I picked up almost no paint, and that is already, like, such a bright blue. Okay, fine. A bit expensive because of the shipping rates to here, but I think it's worth it. Oh, nice. Shipping is a real pain in the backside. <laughs> it really is. Like, oh, my God, it's so expensive. Um, especially, is it shipping from, is it shipping from the States? Because if it's shipping from the States, I wouldn't be surprised that it was, like, a lot. Um, experience tells me. <laughs> That trying to ship anything overseas from, like, America is, like, 
why why are you so expensive like like why you are but like damn why um including things like i've looked on etsy for things like a sticker and it's like $12 for shipping to the uk and i'm like this is a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter sticker Etsy, are you broken? And the answer is a resounding probably. Okay, just, just just fading it out a little bit. Just doing fading it out. Okay, just just gonna blend. Just gonna blend that out a bit because down here I want the sort of backdrop to be a bit greener. Just a little bit greener of a backdrop. Here. I'm gonna I'm gonna add more detail to this. I mean I could just leave it as a gradient, because like, you know, I can do whatever I want. I can economize on details or I can make it fairly um deeply, deeply detailed. It, it's it's whatever I want. But uh in this case I think I do want to give a little bit more detail than just than just having a little gradient in the background because I think that's, uh, I feel like I could make it a little more interesting than that. But that's a reasonable starting point to kind of lay other things on top of, I think. Anyways. Um. Okay, fine. It's... Messy and impressionistic, but it's also literally just a vague background color. Um, ooh, damn. Uh, Silly says, um, uh, oh wait, I missed some chat from Neo as well. Neo says, can't believe my Wi-Fi is stable enough to, to watch Twitch on train, but I'll take, hell yeah, congratulations on train Twitch. That's amazing. How's y'all? I am pretty good. I'm enjoying painting this, this silly bird so far. Um, and they seem to be having a pretty good time as well. Uh, so love that for me. Uh, hope y'all are doing well also. Hope you're having a lovely time. Um, buying stuff from the States is so flipping expensive, says Samantha. And then on top, you end up having to pay about the same again in import fees. <laughs> Most of which is apparently just the Royal Mail handling fees. The actual duty is actually fairly reasonable. Oh, I hate that. I hate when you order something and it shows up and it's like, okay, there's a fee and the fee is more money than you spent on the thing. Why? <laughs> Rude. Um, Silly says, uh, Sanchi, the website gave me a discount code after I bought it. So I gave it to my friend. Nice. Love that. <laughs> also cacophon looking silly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that is, that is a lot of that is a lot of money. Cheapest shipping, and it was still like 23 euros, additionally on top of the plushie. Oof, ouch. I'm, but you know, so, I feel like sometimes if it is something that you really, really love, it's worth it. But um, a lot of the time it just, it just means that I'm not able to give custom to places that I otherwise would like to and get stuff that I otherwise would like to because it just adds so much to it. You know what I mean? Sad. Oh, well. <laughs> I, you know, like for, for my shop, uh, when, when I sell things, I try and keep my shipping rates as like teeny tiny as I possibly can, because I know that like, you know, as a tiny, as a tiny single individual person, just like taking things to the post office by myself, uh, I don't have access to like discounted shipping rates in any way, shape or form that like larger, like huge scale businesses do. Um, and also... But it also restricts me in terms of the things that I can sell because I don't want to be either paying for like absurdly expensive shipping out of pocket and actively losing money when I sell stuff. But also I don't want to be passing on like ridiculously expensive shipping fees to, um, you know, like people who are trying to support me. So, eh. Though I will say, uh, the, just the general shipping rates for the things that, that I am sending out, um, 
It seems like the post here is maybe just a lot less expensive than America. I don't know. But um, I do notice in particular, I don't know if anyone else has had this experience, but buying like or looking to buy stuff through Etsy, there, there's like, I think there must be some sort of like automated ship, shipping calculator within the website that oftentimes will be like, haha, this sticker needs to like $25 worth of postage when if you just buy it from the artist's website it's actually like four bucks um which is frankly just shame on etsy <laughs> like what are you doing you're just getting it wrong and probably cheating people out of sales um but then as much as i do still buy things on etsy quite a bit because there's a lot of people selling really really good stuff on etsy i also do not sell on Etsy anymore. I used to have an Etsy shop and I switched over to just selling through my Kofi instead. Um, a little while ago, maybe a year or two. I don't know. But in large part, the reason for that was just that like the fees and the settings and the weird rules that they imposed were really anathema to actually being able to like run a business and not lose all of your money. <laughs> I think there was a print that I sold and I looked at the actual fees that I was charged for it and I realized that I, for the amount that like an art print costs for me, I paid a third of that in fees. And so I was like, okay, well I can put my prices up on Etsy, but that doesn't seem fair. But the inverse of this is that, well, then people, you know, Etsy has like a search function which allows people to find your work, but... I also was not really getting a lot of sales from people just finding my work natively through Etsy's search. Certainly not enough to make up for the additional fees. So I just decided that meh, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna DIY it. And, you know, am I losing income from that? Maybe, but also, eh. Um... Certainly, certainly at this stage, not a ton. So, oh, well, I guess. Anyways, sorry for business chat. I don't know if that's really boring. Uh, Silly says, I googled the rules in my country and there will not be an import fee because it is under $135. Nice. That is a good stuff. Love that for you. It is slightly annoying having to pay those. I do, I do appreciate when there are import fees. I have bought from... Uh, vendors who actually have like some kind of arrangement in place where that the import fees are like prepaid so you don't have to you don't have to wait for like the item to turn up in the country and then it gets held in like import jail and you have to you have to pay to release it or whatever and have it delivered to you instead you just pay the import fees at the same time that you purchase the item so you know how much the fees are you know how much it's going to be with all of the fees which is fantastic um, and you also know that there's not going to be any lengthy delays waiting for it to come out of like, you know, purgatory, um, on the other side, which, hey, at least, at least that's something. Um, can I get an appropriate branch brown? Doesn't want to be too warm, but I don't want to accidentally make it just gray. I'll try that, but I mean, I'm going to layer some texture on top of it anyways, and I'm accidentally flicking brown paint onto the, <laughs> onto the canvas as I try and mix that together. So this is, this is quite a large branch that he's, uh, that he's just perched on here. I might add some, I might add some fun moss to it as well, because moss is fun. I love some moss. Anyways... Do, do, do. How do bird feet work? I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Yay! The bird is on some tree. <laughs> Not just any moss. Fun moss. I certainly wouldn't want to do unfun moss, would I? Where's the, where's the joy in unfun moss? It's gotta be, it's gotta be joyful moss. Otherwise, what's the point? 
Anyways, um, how, how's everyone's Thursdays going? What have you been up to today? I hope you've had a good day. I did some baking earlier. That was a lot of fun. I, um, I was making a rhubarb, a strawberry rhubarb and almond tart, uh, with like a puff pastry base. It's currently cooling in the kitchen. I actually, I noticed that I was like, okay, I think this is about done, but I don't have, I'm, I'm in the middle of making a coffee, so I don't want to like stop making the coffee in order to like take it out of the oven. So I just switched the oven off and I almost just like abandoned it in there and forgot that I'd done it. Oh, silly me. But I didn't, I did, I did get it out and, um, I would show you a picture, but honestly it is, uh, it's not the most aesthetic of bakes. It's kind of an eyesore, but it's like a puff pastry eyesore with like beautiful British rhubarb. So I'm happy with it because I know it's going to be delicious. <laughs> Tomorrow, hopefully I'll be baking Easter bread. And I also want to do some Rice Krispie squares. Uh, I have some marshmallows that need using up. And I also bought, I bought myself, okay. I bought myself this box of cereal. If you're not familiar with the cereal situation in the United of Kingdom, um, you do not get marshmallow cereal here. It's just not a thing. Like our cereal selection is extremely boring compared to like Canada and the States. Um, so I saw marshmallow cereal and it was also, it was called marshmallow mateys, which is just <laughs> like, isn't that just TV's our flag means death? Anyways, <laughs> it just tickled me so much that I had to get it. So I got it. And, um, it's well in date. It's best before like several months from now. So I figured, okay, now is a good time to open it and have like a bowl of cereal. And I poured myself a little bowl, a little bowl of the cereal the other day, and I ate like two pieces of it just dry. And I was like, why does this taste kind of stale and bad? The cereal itself, because like the the cereal that comes in like marshmallow cereals is generally kind of plain. You know, it's it doesn't have much flavor in itself because there's literal marshmallows in the cereal. How is this part of a ba healthy, balanced breakfast? How is this part of a healthy, balanced breakfast? I do not know. But um, it didn't just taste like kind of plain. It tasted like a little stale. But this the uh, marshmallow pieces taste perfect. But I can't just eat the marshmallow pieces in and of themselves. So I thought I could use them as part of sort of the composition slash decor of some Easter themed marshmallow rice crispy squares. So that's what I'm doing. I got a thing of mini eggs. I'm going to decorate it with mini eggs. I'm going to decorate it with these stupid cereal marshmallows that are shapes of like little starfish and dolphins and some kind of a blob. I don't actually know what the purple blob's going to be, supposed to be, rather. I'm just, you know what, I'm going to say it's a Kraken's tentacle because I think that's cool. Um, but I'm doing that, and I'm also baking, doing a sensible baked good, which is Easter bread, which I'm very excited for because I only make it once a year. It is a Hungarian delicacy. It's so good. I'm excited. Anyways, <laughs> so that's my tomorrow, and I'm very excited for it. Um... Silly says, I got my shadow, gr I got my shadow gr Grodon in Pokemon Go. I have no idea what that Pokemon looks like. I need to look it up. But congratulations. Hell yeah. What does it look like? Image search. Oh, Okay, this is probably, this is not the most representative photo, I don't think, but I also just think it's a great photo, so. Teehee! Congratulations, silly, this is a wonderful friend. Oh, I just want to give them scritches. <laughs> Super cute. Congrats, good job. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a sip of my beverage, which is a uh, lovely coffee. I'm getting real sort of like treacly notes from it today, which I love. I love a coffee with treacly notes. It reminds me of a Halloween candy that we used to have in Canada that no one but me liked, which was this like treacle, this very, very, very chewy, like tooth ruining treacle toffee type thing called Halloween Kisses. 
and they came, you know, sort of wrapped in little, little, like, rectangles of them wrapped in wax paper with little Halloween pictures printed on it in orange. And I loved them so much. And everyone else was like, ew, those are the worst. I just throw them away. And I got it. Like they were cheap, which is, I think, why, it's so, you know, people gave them out. But I would get so upset because I was like, if you have Halloween kisses you don't want, just give them to me. Because they're good, actually. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I think I want to try... I want to try and establish that there's, like, some trees and stuff kind of hanging around in the background. So I think I might just... I think I might just put... Start putting some, like, tree shapes back there. Um... Just sort of behind it. But a lot of a lot of these branchy bits will probably just end up being covered by um tree foliage anyways. So it's not it's not super important what it looks like at this point. It's all fine. Should I be using a slightly less stout brush for this perchance, maybe? Maybe I should. Um, but maybe I'll do that in a moment. Anyways. Very friend says silly. Hell yeah. Love that for you. Okay. Nice. Nice? Eh. Nice-ish. Um, again, this is, this is not, this is not the most material bit of the piece. So I'm kind of I'm kind of, I'm keeping it kind of vague because I think vague is a perfectly appropriate way for these tree, tree bits to be. I don't, I don't want any of the, I don't want any of them to look like weird tangents that like, this is just a part of birth, you know? <laughs> no. But just give an impression. Um, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for the rest of this portion. Um, but just a slightly smaller brush. Not like a hugely smaller brush, but just a little bit. Anyways, if you drink coffee, what are your favorite tasting notes? I am curious. I am curiosity. Just disappear into that one. It's fine, whatever. <laughs> the trees don't need to make that much sense. And some of them can be very, very vanishing. Quite, quite a distance away. So, like, who cares? I mean, I care, obviously. I am putting a reasonable amount of care into this work. But also, you know... I don't want to get carried away by painting millions of books again. Because <laughs> that's not really the kind of piece that this is. But it's all fine. Anyways. And some trees way off in the distance. Way off in the distance. That's... I feel like that gives an impression of treeness. Does this give an impression of treeness? I feel like this gives a reasonable impression of treeness. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, so I reckon I'm going to leave it there for the treeness. And give that a little bit of a clean down. Figure out how on earth one paints moth. Because <laughs> I don't know. Um... Maybe I can, if I just pick up an absolute butt ton of kiwi green and keep the brush relatively dry, maybe I can get some nice mossy textures sort of on the top 
segment of this uh this um the word I'm lo- branch the word I'm looking for is branch the word I was looking for was branch okie dokie what the heck does moss texture look like it's very sort of like it's very sort of like fluffy but if I kind of start it with like dudes I feel like I can, can I, I feel like I can build out of dudes pretty well and just kind of keep keep building like maybe add a slightly different shade of green around it and let it kind of become a little bit more sparse as we move away from it um, or as it just becomes the bit of the branch where we see more of branch it is so heckin windy outside ooh it's pissing it down oh beans well then <laughs> I hope the weather is nice where you're at. How is the weather? I hope it's good. Um, we're apparently having some rain situations. I was playing Stardew Valley earlier, incidentally. Um, the update dropped and I have been sucked back in. Oh no, I started a new farm to explore all of the fun new features in. Um, and I started a new farmer. His name so the farmer's name is Jeff. So stupidly, I named the farm Jeff's Farm. <laughs> oh dear. And so it was really weird when, like, Mayor Lewis, or I think, was it... It's either Mayor Lewis or Robin the Carpenter who, like, takes you to your farm and introduces you to it. And they just and they just said, like, oh, hello, Jeff. Nice to meet you. This is Jeff's farm. It's like, why are you referring to me in the fir- third person? I'm right here. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, so it's Jeff's farm. Um, and so far, Jeff is having a very nice time catching fish. And he's only died once. And when he did die, he woke up in the uh, doctor's clinic, and he was totally cool with this because he is absolutely romancing Harvey, who is the doctor in Stardew Valley. Um, And also, just like a real dreamboat. Have you seen his mustache? Ooh la la. Uh, Samantha says, version 1.6 added the ability to drink mayonnaise which is a hate crime against me specifically and thus i will not be playing it that is no 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 that's disgusting is this something i'm gonna guess that this is something that the user base has been asking for but i have a question for the user base and that question is why why would you want to do this that's horrifying. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Why? Listen, mayonnaise is fine as a condiment, as a an ingredient, as an accessory to food. It is fine. I really enjoyed dipping my frites in mayonnaise when I was in Belgium. Just like a good Belgian person. Um, had a lovely time with that. But I tell you what, <laughs> um, like, I, you know, I, I wasn't like scooping, I wasn't mainlining it into my move. I was dipping a little bit on the end of my chip and it was very pleasant and a nice flavor. <sighs> I don't, I don't feel like I'm so much here for just guzzling an entire jar. I don't want to shame anyone for whom that is their preferred mayonnaise eating. Like, maybe you love mayonnaise and you would want to do that. Okay, um, but damn. (laughs) Um, Samantha says, even if you romance and marry him, he's going to continue to charge you for fainting in the mine. Listen, that is just the broken healthcare system that he is having to work within in whatever country Stardew Valley is set in. Um, and based on certain aspects of it, I feel like it's at least kind of based on America, sort of. 
So that would explain it. They don't have an NHS. Uh, <laughs> oh, I hate that for them. Anyways, um, that's not, that's just Harvey doing his job. It's okay. Anyways, uh, but also, have you seen Harvey? He's precious, and I'm, I've never romanced him before, and, and I asked him to dance at the spring dance, and he blushed, and it was really stinking cute, and I'm very excited about it. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, Samantha says, I assume it's because other food items can be eaten to recover health and stamina. Yeah, true. Um, anyways. Well, now I'm depressed. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna change my paint color a little bit. And add some moss. That's a slightly different shade of green. Just to keep things interesting. And also so it looks a little bit more like, I feel like moss probably is supposed to. Oh no, is that worse? I can't tell if that's worse. I might, I'll probably end up going over this whole thing with like another sort of wash of brown anyway, so it's not going to look quite this sort of bright and glowy and, oh my, can, y'all, can you hear that? That is so windy. Holy heck. I'm just going to check and make sure that the window is actually fully closed because uh, I'm getting some breezes. Oh, hold up. It was on, it was on the latch. So there was some, there was some wind coming in. Uh, I have closed the window. So hopefully it won't be quite so loud. Anyways. Um... Let's see. Can I just fill this up? I think I made it accidentally a little bit too dark, but oh well. I'm just gonna go with it because I've already started, and I can't I can't control Z. So I kind of need to just deal and just keep and just keep on keeping on basically. Oh, joy. Wind is so strong. It's quantum tunneling through the window. I really wish it wouldn't do that. Um, I'm wearing a sleeveless top because it was reasonably comfortable in here earlier. And I don't want to have to BRB to go put on a jumper because I think my cardigan is in the other room. Which per perchance was my first mistake, but listen... It wasn't a mistake at the time. Okay. I, th I feel like that blends in actually not too badly. I feel like that blends in okay. Mm, all right. So I'm going to I'm going to let that dry for a moment. Well, that's right. Okay, now there's weird other sounds coming from outside. <laughs> I don't know. I love I love the nature sounds that happen in my neighborhood. Not so much the neighbor sounds that happen in my neighborhood. Those are bizarre and confounding, frankly. <laughs> but oh well. Um, okay. I'm going to make some fairly watery green. And I'm going to start just adding some, like, blurry foliage behind us. Does it make sense? I don't know. Does it have to? Eh. Not really. <laughs> uh, it is, it was a high wind, I tell you what. I haven't... I'm quite grateful for where we live for not being, like, maximum windy, because when I, I used to live up north, I, when I first moved to this country, I lived up in Manchester, um, kind of close to Salford Keys, and my gosh, did it get heckin' windy up there, so much wind, oh my goodness gracious, and it was, um... It was so loud and genuinely quite occasionally sort of 
end of the world scary feeling, which is super fun when you're living alone in a brand new country where you don't know very many people. Um, camera is focused on the burb friend, not the background foliage. Exactly, Samantha. Exactly. Very much it is. The background foliage is, um, it's, uh, what, what is the, what is the word I seek for it? The depth of field of this, of this, the camera of this piece is quite shallow, I think. Okay. I think I, I'm going to use a slightly, I'm going to use a few different shades of green so we feel like there's more than one tree in this piece. Otherwise it's going to feel kind of weird. Um, so, so I think that's enough of this green pro I might just fill, fill this out a little bit more. Fill it out, fill it in. So it's less, it's less dutes and more blobs. Kind of like, because this is, this is more blobs than dutes, I feel like. So I can kind of make blobs rather than dutes. But I think that's probably about it for this, this shade of green. And we will let that kind of chill. And then, and then come in with some more greens to kind of overlap and fill, fill in the space a little bit more. Um, so we'll leave that at that. And then this bit, um, okay. I'm going to, do you want to do something? Y'all, do you want to do something weird? I kind of want to do something weird. I'm going to do something a little bit weird here. So this is one of the things that's quite cool about this, um, out this paint. I was gonna say it's permanent when it dries. It's not really demonstrating that here, but maybe I hadn't let it dry fully. I don't know. Maybe maybe I came in too quickly, and I put it on too thickly, because that was definitely doing a bit of a moving about of the paint as I as I push water over it. So a uh, whoops. Uh, but anyways, that's kind of blended out the moss, which I think actually works quite well for it. But I'm gonna. I'm going to darken down the bits of the branch that are just branch kind of beneath and around the moss, the mossy patch as well by adding in some additional of the, the branch brown. I just wanted to do something that was just like a nice sort of jolly, jolly springtimey piece that isn't too that isn't too complicated and that I can maybe finish within a couple of hours just because of the, the the length of time it took us to do that damn bookshop and I say that damn bookshop with like the utmost love because I was so very pleased with the way that that damn bookshop <laughs> turned out I think it turned out really really well in the end um I did finish it off stream, like, uh, on Tuesday, I think. I haven't posted it yet, but I did also film the finishing of it. Um, so that, that will be, that will be posting as like a video. So that has been chronicled, which is, which is a good, I, I think, I hope, I hope, I think, I think, I hope, I think, I hope, I think. Anyways, gonna dot some greeniness over the moss as well. There's still there's still all that texture underneath, but I just want it to feel a little bit darker. Just so it's got a little bit more definition. There we go. I think that looks so much better. It just it pulls it together nicely, I think. So that's really good. Happy with that for now. Will I, will I futz with it later? It's, it's likely, it's very likely I'll futz with it later. Oh no, uh, this needs to dry before I can really do anything else with it. So, uh, love that for me. Um, <laughs> that needs to dry as well before I can do other shades of green. I have 
painted myself into a corner where I can't really do anything until one of these segments of the painting dry. Sorry, I've got hiccups. Can't really do anything until one of the segments of the painting dries. Oh no. Do you want to, do you want to have like a momentary interlude and just like work on something else for a second? Um, because we can, we can also just do that. I'm just going to do that real quick. Um, I want to get some, I want to finish this foliage as well. So I'm going to move this little bird off to one side. And we're going to come back to it when we've done another layer of tree here, uh, for which I need a different paint. So one moment, please. Um, this, this is a piece of just a couple of little guys having a little, having a little shindig on the beach, some little lanterns and a fire and they're, they're dancing cause I'm a sap. Anyways. Where's my paint? Got my paint. Okay. I want to do some more sticker sheety type stuff when, when we come back from the, the Easter break. Because I am taking a little break for Easter. Um, I hope that's okay. Uh, just going to be doing some holiday stuff. Oh, never mind. We're not working on this. Well, I got my paints for nothing because we got a terrible drawing time instead. Yay! Thank you, Samantha. Um... Uh, she says, while it dries, let's draw a giant robot dinosaur in honor of my latest fixation, the HZD sequel being out on PC. I don't know what that- oh, it's Horizon Zero Dawn, isn't it? Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, sequel being out on PC. Is that Horizon Forbidden West? Am I right? Yes? Maybe? Anyways, okay, uh, allow me to explain terrible drawing time for anyone who doesn't understand. Because there may be new people, and you may be confused. So, first of all, I can, well, my moderator slash spouse is playing Stardew Valley right now because I just walked over to the door and I heard the music. Anyways. <laughs> oh, okay. I really do not need the, like, time... The, the black hole of time that is uh, that is Stardew Valley right now because I've got so much to work on. But on the other hand, I want I want to get Harvey to marry Farmer Jeff. They're gonna be so happy together. Jeff has a dog. Jeff has a doggo. I named the dog Stu because I wanted to give him like a just a guy name because that's fun. Uh, is that an emu wearing the spoils of its victory in war? That is. Somebody wanted to see an emu wearing one of those hats that's got the little, the little dangly corks on it. So I did that. I hope. <laughs> I hope that's what an emu looks like. I'm glad that you uh, identified it as an emu. Yay. Okay. Um, as you can see, this canvas is terrifying. This is terrible drawing time. It is a phenomenon by which for 5,000 channel points, I've got five minutes or less to draw a character or concept of your choosing from memory or sight unseen on the terrible drawing canvas, which I inevitably will forget to upload to Discord. But I've got, I've got like a backlog of like four of them. I will at some point remember when I am off stream. Oh yeah, terrible drawing time is a thing that exists and people might want to see these terrible drawings when I haven't, when I'm not streaming them. Um, but anyways, there's, here's me with a pretzel. Here's some characters from Star Trek The Next Generation. Hopefully you can guess which ones they are. Here's another character from Star Trek The Next Generation. TNG has been a popular concept. There's a Snufkin. There's an orangutan. Um, there's Gambit and, and Wolverine from the X-Men. Uh, you can tell it's Gambit because he's saying, huh, it's time to play cards and maybe do a sexy situation, which is exactly what he sounds like. Anyways, I mean, it's a hat traditionally associated with Australian, so I choose to, chose to believe I, it, it took it from one of the vanquished Australian soldiers. Yes. Yes. They got into a script. Honestly, there are a lot of creatures in Australia that, uh, scare me. Um, that I just feel like if I ever encountered this creature in the wild, I would, I would die horribly. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. 
Okay. Um, I need a clock. I need a timer. I need five minutes on the timer starting now. And I'm going to draw a robot dinosaur. Now, notably, I just want to point out that Samantha did not specify what type of dinosaur she wanted me to draw. That means I can draw any dinosaur I want, and she cannot complain. I mean, she can complain, but... And I'll feel sad if she does, but I hope she will appreciate my choice of dinosaurs. Uh, Samantha says, Australia, so full of venomous critters, they even have the world's only venomous mammal. It's a scary place. My, my brother is visiting, is, is having to go on a business trip to Australia at the exact same time that I'm visiting Canada. <laughs> um, so, whoops. <laughs> but, um, but... I, I have I have requested that he comes back with Tim Tams because how dare you would go all the way to Australia and not come back with Tim Tams, frankly. Like, listen, I'm only turning 40 once and I'm your little sister. Please Tim Tam me. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Samantha says, as an autistic with a childhood special interest in dinos, I might complain if your choice isn't actually a dino. Remember, birds are dinosaurs, pterosaurs are not. Right. Okay. Well, good news. I was not going to draw a pterosaur. Does that make you feel better? I hope so. I'm going to draw one of the dinosaur shapes I remember from the Land Before Time films. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. And it's going to go here because there is some free space above. Um, also, it is one of the default dinosaur nuggy shapes, but I wanted to do... I wanted to do one of I wanted to do one of the one of the types of dinosaur that is thin at one end, much thicker at the other, and then much thinner again on the other end. Cause why? Because I think they're fun. But I have not forgotten the fact that this is a robot dinosaur. Oh no! Have you seen that they are doing a new slash reboot of The Land Before Time in fugly 3D digital animation? I am unsurprised. And also sad. Okay, this robot dinosaur is very happy. They also have a little antenna that's heart-shaped and glows. And probably goes beep boop. Um, so I'm just going to be aware of where a robot dinosaur would be likely to have sort of like segments or joints gonna pop some funky little rivets here and there so that they can freely move their little dino bodies the tail's gonna have a few segments because the tail's gonna want to be able to to wag if it needs to if the dino is very happy um There we go. Okay, so it's so you can see that it's made out of like metal parts because it's a robo dino and it's going to have a little just I think right here it's going to have a little display thing that tells you how the dino is doing. How's its battery level? You know, all that jazz. Um this is a very good this is a very good boy of a dinosaur or maybe a good girl or maybe a good NB dinosaur. Um but this is a sweet friend and would absolutely go beep boop with delight um, if, if you encountered it in the Forbidden West, um, which I'm guessing is how the dinosaur... Get I haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn or Forbidden West, so I don't really know what the deal is with, like, any of that. Um... Like, can you befriend the dinosaurs, the robot dinos? I hope you'd be able to befriend the robot dinosaurs. This little guy is, or this giant guy in context, this is not to scale, or that would be heckin' terrifying, um, is maximum befriendable. Because look at them, they're very cute. 
Um, you can sort of befriend them, says Samantha. Fantastic. Love to hear it. Okay, uh, so this is your Robo Dino. They are friend shaped, as you can see. And uh, yeah, that's that's a little guy. I hope you like them, and I hope you're happy. That was terrible drawing time, everybody. Yay! Fun stuff. I'm gonna take a quick BRB. Let's take a look and see how the, the, the situation... Okay, I think we can do more foliage up in the trees. This bit is definitely still, like, very wet. But we can do some more foliage up in the trees in the background. So, I'm gonna uh, drop a quick BRB, let things kind of cure for just a little bit longer, and we'll come back in a second and uh, continue attending to the rest of this painting. So, hello, hello. Uh, let me get the camera... There we go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Uh, Theo, thank you very much for the lurk. Much appreciated. I hope you have a lovely, lovely lurk time. Uh, Samantha says, very good Robo Dino. And filling a much needed niche in that horizon, which is very lacking in Robo Sauropods. Oh, goodness gracious. Well then, I'm glad to have, I'm glad to have been able to fill that niche. Because this was a very fun dinosaur to draw. Very, very fun indeed. Um, is it realistically based on an actual dinosaur that we think existed in real life? No. <laughs> but it was an I tried of a dinosaur. I think it's fair to say. Uh, I did try. And honestly, that's... Can you ask more of me? Probably, but you won't likely get it because I'm very tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. Anyways. Um, hope you enjoyed the robosauropod situation. I'm going to take another sip of my now very, very cold coffee. Like, hot damn, it is so cold. But honestly, this is also a coffee that I think just adapts and is okay cold. Not all coffees are great cold. But this one's pretty decent cold, so I'm cool with that. Did you, did you clear your throat, my love? Are you okay? Oh, okay. Sorry, just checking to see uh, whether or not my mod slash spouse needed anything, and it turns out he didn't, so we're all good. Anyways, gonna add a little bit of the bluish green, but not quite as much. Hopefully this green is distinct and different from that green. I now honestly can't... Yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit less... There's a, it's a little bit of a yellow or green. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to just fully blend in and be the exact same because that would have kind of defeated the purpose. Do, 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 do. Some overlap between the greens. I mean, there's there's green happening in the background of this piece and then the bird is also green, but... Listen, the Kakapo exists in forests and stuff where things are mostly green. So <laughs> that is the, I, I could have had him going to the supermarket, but I thought, no, I'm going to draw him in more or less his natural habitat because that felt like it made the most sense. You know, um, <laughs> I've decided I maybe want to make that, that bit of foliage a slightly different color. So uh, I've, I've shooed it away. That's fine. But um, I think we can get a more a more vibrant, more don't want to say obvious green, but certainly a more um, foreground green for this this lovely little buddy. I think that'll be nice. Um. What else wants to be? There's some foliage this color back here. Because why not? Hell yeah. Okay. Maybe this as well. I can just, I can hear the Stardew Valley music happening in the, I don't know if you can hear it at all, but I can hear the Stardew Valley music happening in the other room. And so my brain is just going sort of, la, 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 la. <laughs> it's like, no, 
I'm in the middle of stream and I'm not streaming Stardew. Maybe I should have streamed Stardew Valley today, but I really wanted to paint birds, okay? I just really wanted to paint a bird. It's been so long since I've gotten to paint anything other than that one thing. Um, so I wanted to maybe paint some bird. Doing that little waddle that parrots do when they try and walk on flat ground. Oh, imagining a cacapo at the supermarket pushing around a tiny trolley with his beak. Yes, doing the... If you've ever seen one of these guys walking around, they definitely do sort of waddle. It's incredibly cute. They are just the loveliest creatures. <laughs> I love them so much. I just want to give it a big hug, but I can't because I don't live in the same country as them. As you can tell by my, by my accent, I'm based in the United Kingdom. Hello, my name is Twitch user Sammy Kelch. This is exactly what I sound like when I'm not affecting a Canadian accent while I stream. <laughs> can you imagine? Ugh. Of all the accents you could fake, why would you fake mine? Like, it's not... It's not very interesting. I don't think, I don't think people are like, ooh, you know what's real sexy? A Canadian accent. That's a sexy accent. I don't, it's, it's quite boring. As well as oh my God, that is such a good British TV voiceover accent. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I was going to try and do it again, but like now there's pressure, so I can't. Oh no. Um... Uh. If you've been affected by any of the issues raised in today's stream, there's a Discord for that. <laughs> Legit thought you were about to announce it was coming coming up later on BBC Two. And at seven thirty, my dinner, in which I, off stream, make Japanese salad. Anyways, um. Oh, speaking, oh man, speaking of food, um, I haven't, I don't, I don't know whether or not it's still on or if it stopped running a few years ago. I don't know, but I used to watch MasterChef. Does anyone else remember MasterChef? It was a show where people would cook meals and then some like snooty guys would judge them and they, they often had a real bias against vegetarian food. I don't know if that's just like a cultural thing, but they'd be like, oh, it doesn't have any meat. How's it going to have flavor? But anyways, there was a narrator for that show and she had the best voice. Just the best voice. It's Master Chef. That's what she sounded like. It was fantastic. Everything was so, like, it's just so dramatic being, you know, like, um, uh, <laughs> I think it's a snooty chef thing, but also just people in general. Yeah. I mean, I'm very happy to see the range of, like, meat-free stuff you can get at the supermarket is really good where I am, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, but uh, let me see if I can... Let me see if I can describe my lunch today <laughs> in Master Chef style. Um, <coughs> uh, let's see. Sammy has prepared a... Oh, what shall I, um, Sammy has prepared a, a, a Kenyan coffee, a, a Kenyan pour over coffee and heritage beans in a rich tomato sauce. I had a small tin of baked beans and I made myself a coffee with it. <laughs> and I think I can call them heritage beans because frankly, baked beans are a part of British heritage. Am I right? Am I am I incorrect in 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 thinking that? I don't think so. Anyways, um, <laughs> anywho, All right? Do I want to do some more leaves? Do some leaves in this color as well. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think these leaves are coming along pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, I find that attitude really weird because it's like, 
have you not ever had, like, any food that just inherently doesn't contain meat and is extremely flavorful? Like, just normal supermarket things like carrot and coriander soup. That exists. That's normal British food. It doesn't have meat. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I just, I don't, I find it, I find it a really weird sort of attitude to have, because I think it just, uh, have you literally, like, collectively forgotten all of the foods that you, like, eat normally that don't have meat in them? Um, <laughs> I would very much prefer my food to be as unflavorful as possible. You know, some people just really like bland food. It is true. It is true. I don't. I like seasoning. That's two turquoise. Can we make that just a tittle touch less turquoise, please and thank you. Okay. That's still exceedingly bright. I might need to blot this out. Oh no. It's too br it's too bright. It's too bright. Let's add a little let's water it down a little bit so it's not quite so quite so loud. Blot, blot, blot. Blot, blot, blot. Love a good blot, blot, blot. It is quite fun when your paint is super wet and you, you decide you don't want, want it there anymore and you can just do that and then it's all gone. That's nice. That's really nice. Anyways. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, seasoning. Um, I like her. Seasoning is my friend. And... Um, I am, I think, as I mentioned earlier, I'm having a Japanese salad. So that's like the, if you've had salad at a Japanese restaurant, there's a good chance you've had like the miso ginger dressing of, of whence I am alluding to, to, to which I am alluding. I just, shut up. Um, I can word. Okay. Um, I'm very, I'm very looking forward to it because I haven't done it in a wee while. It is. Actually, a little bit more difficult to do now, uh, because I used to make the dressing in the blender, and then the blender broke, and now I have to use the stick blender. But that's okay. It's still doable. So it's all fine. But it is, um, it is a nice meal, and it's fairly straightforward to make. And I do appreciate also meals that are fairly straightforward, that are nice. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit more of the sort of slightly more yellowy kiwi green. Just a little. Um, over here, just way off in the distance. Oh, just adding some little leafy doots. Star. I feel like I feel like I've given it some semblance of a very ugly impressionistic forest. <laughs> but oh well. Listen, I tried my best. Maybe you just want to just add some greenishness to kind of this area just so it doesn't look quite so stupid. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to stop and just assume that the background is fine and move on because the background is, well, the background is important. It's an important part of the piece, but it's not the only part of the piece. And I want to do the bird now. So I'm going to do the bird now and hope for the best. Okay. Anyways. So, as you may know, I'm not streaming tomorrow because it's a holiday day and um, I've got holiday stuff to do. But um, what are y'all up to this weekend? Do you have any plans? Are you taking some time? Are you having a good one? 
I don't really have that many plans for, for most of the weekend. Um, like Saturday, Sunday, I don't know what I'm doing. Probably resting. Which I very much feel like I need, because I am a CP bear, and I'm tired a lot, and uh, I'm kind of overdoing things. I want I would like to not do things. That would be rad. I had actually hoped to get more artsy stuff done off stream earlier this week. Like, I really want to add a few more stream stickers. We've got three at the moment, which you may have seen, and I love them. But it'd be cool if there was more. I want to do a Hollow Knight one. I want to do one of... um. I want to do one of, uh, the little guy from Hollow Knight, just, like, chugging the carton of fight milk. If you know the fight milk emote, which is, oh, where is it gone? My, my supposedly frequently used emotes in chat here includes a lot of emotes I've literally never used that are, like, global emotes, so I don't know what the heck they're talking about, um... But the fight milk emote, which is the Hollow Knight emote that we've got uh, currently. I just thought it would be cute to do... Oh, thank you. Thank you, Samantha. <laughs> well, I just thought it would be really, really cute to do like a little sticker of the little guy and they're, they're just chugging a fight milk because it's me and I regularly have to, to heal, so... Anyway, Samantha says, getting ready for Jesus' egg cracking on this conjunction of Trans Day of Visibility and Easter. Hell yeah, trans rigs. We love to see it. I mean, if I was if I was very specific about picking out the marshmallows from this cereal and using them to decorate my Rice Krispie squares, I could I could conceivably attempt like a trans pride color theme for it, but then I'd have a whole bunch of additional marshmallows I would need to kind of um I would need to kind of just eat and they are as nostalgic as they may be for me they are also incredibly sweet and so I feel like they need the blandness of Rice Krispies around them That's better. Okay. Now I just need to look up what what does a kakapo look like? And what colors should its plumage be? I mean, I know it's like mostly green, but um there's there's other there's other colorations involved as well. They've got like some brown bits and their feet are kind of grayish. They from this photo anyways, which is which is the the photo this is the this is the bird that I adopted. So I'm kind of working off of, like, the plumage in this photo, because <laughs> this is the bird I adopted. Um, so, let's see. He's very cute. That's for darn sure. But it's quite, uh, it's quite like a this, like a this green, but just a little bit greener. I would say, look at that absolute friend that Samantha's so fluffy. They are so fluffy. They are so fluffy and so stinking cute. Um, and they've got these, like, puffy cheeks with, like, oh, excuse me, like, fluffy plumage. They're just the absolute, the absolute precious, preciousest, absolute preciousest. If preciousest is a word, it is not, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> making it one now. Um, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do its little, like, beak and feet first. Just because those are kind of grayish. Which is fairly straightforward to do, I think. I can get a fairly straightforward gray. Yep, good. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Rad. Rad stuff. Yay! It's got a beak! They've got a beak! Um, Lino says, I don't know if you use the BTTV Twitch extension. I don't, but if you do, you might want to enable animated gifts and especially rare parrot. I don't! 
But now I feel like I should because, oh, that sounds adorable. Ah, beans. Okay, they've also got, like, really fluffy sort of, like, bell-bottom feathery legs, which is very, very cute. I love these little guys. They are the best. I just want to give them a big cuddle. I don't know if they'd be into that, but I just want to give them a big old cuddle. There we go. Yay! <laughs> You've heard of owl bears. Now get ready for the owl parrot. Oh! Mm. I just want to, I want to give them scratches. I want to give them little scratches. Okay. I think what I'm going to do... Because there are some, there are some little areas of the parrot that are quite like a... Uh, mm, quite pale. So I think I might actually do kind of a very pale base and then layer everything on top of that which is a very sort of almost sort of a yellowy brownish situation but I need to water that way down because it is quite it is quite subtle um So it's like that, but this is, I'm making this paint so... Can you see how homeopathic this paint is? It's basically... It's basically just, like, dishwater at this point. It is barely a shade. And I'm just going to cover the whole burb in this, and then we'll, we'll get the feather colors on top of that, I think, is probably a good way to go about it. But just give it, give it a good base that isn't going to, like, muddy down the brighter green and sort of darker details of the plumage. But also means we're not just working on, like, a white backdrop. Because some bits of this, like, almost nothing color are going to be visible. And we would like that. But also, we would like it not to be pure white. But I would also like to not end up in a situation where I'm trying to paint this around, like, the green bits. I feel like that would be quite difficult to do. So. So this'll do. Anyways, have I, co have I covered the whole thing in paint? The thing about using a really light paint color is that sometimes it's really hard to see where you've painted. But you want to make sure that you've got... Okay, I've got I've got a full coverage bird. Good. Good. Love that for me. So you're saying drinking that paint water will cure you of paint... No. 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 I've just typed no in the chat for anyone who can't see it. I'm going to take another sip of my beverage. Mmm... It's iced coffee now. Also, you can kind of see when I took a sip there that some of, like, the... There's a little bit of mud, I think, in the bottom of this cup. I don't know if I just ground a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of it too finely for the filter I was using. But then, um, so I made this on the AeroPress, and when I make an AeroPress, I do use... I don't use paper filters for AeroPress, I use a metal filter, which I like because it means that I don't have to keep buying... <laughs> paper filters but it does let through a little bit more sort of like particulate than a paper filter does so it's a slightly less clean brew than you would get with a with a, a paper filter coffee but I don't mind that because I really I I I don't mind a little bit more I don't mind a bit of stuff in the bottom of my coffee not a ton not a ton but a little bit And I do for, for other, um, <coughs> oh no, <coughs> choking on my beverage, <clears throat> just trying to go down my windpipe, um, for other coffee brewing method methods that can sometimes be a little bit like, can sometimes give you a bit of mud on the bottom of the cup. I do have strategies for mud reduction, like on the, the mocha pot and that kind of thing, which I may, I may expunge upon it, expound upon at some point. I don't know. Um, 
if there's an interest for that. Uh, other news. Oh, made some really substantial strides on the, uh, my next YouTube video yesterday. And, um, oh boy. <laughs> just, just, oh boy. <laughs> it is, um, I think it's going to be an interesting video. There is going to have to be, just because of, like, the things you're allowed to say and do on YouTube, there's going to have to be a bonus video on my Patreon that includes all of the stuff I couldn't say and do on my main YouTube channel. Um... Suffice to say, because of, because of what, what's, what happens with, the, there is some, hmm, how shall I say without spoiling the video? Um, it's not that it gets a bit rude, but it gets a bit rude. <laughs> and I know, if you know how wholesome this channel is, that may be a surprise, but if you know me outside of this channel, you'll, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's gonna be fun, though. I really do. Uh, I want this to dry so I can paint more of the bird, because right now I'm just waiting to paint the bird. Sammy putting on a smutty YouTube video. It's not, listen, okay, here's the, th do you want it, do you want me to just tell you what the video's about? Would you like to know what the video is about? Anyone answering in the affirmative in chat, and I, I will do so. But if you don't, then I won't spoil it for you. Um, I don't, I don't want to go into too much detail, but um, I decided to uh, that I thought it'd be fun to recreate a a historic recipe for spotted dick. So you can see where, where the problems arise here. <laughs> you can, you can see why the video has gone the way that it has. <laughs> Anyways, um, it, it also has entailed once again, falling down quite, you know, some research rabbit holes. Um, some, but in this case, some interesting historic recipe testing, um, and I cannot wait to share the results of those historic recipe tests with you, um, because I've made two different versions. They are very different to each other. I have thoughts about them, and I also have some fun facts, which I think people will enjoy. And when I say I have some fun facts that I think people will enjoy, I have dived into the, the exciting world of etymology, and it's, to be honest, a lot of it isn't as rude as... It's, but it, it... Just the nature of the name of the thing. It gets rude, okay? And I am worried that YouTube's gonna be like, you can't say that, even though it's the name of a pudding. <laughs> uh, but it's, it, it has been very much fun to work on. Um, I, need to, I need to finish the filming for it. Maybe I'll get that done this weekend because I, I might have some free time on Saturday and Sunday. So we shall see. But, um, oh, I think this is the first time where it's actually a good thing that my YouTube channel isn't monetized because this video would be demonetized if my channel were, de were monetizable. It would be demonetized, I am sure. Anyways, <laughs> Theo says, bird, bird, this is bird. Um, I think I mentioned it on last stream, but did you know that custard powder was invented in the 1830s by a man named Alfred Bird because his wife was allergic to eggs. So he needed, he needed a, um, a non-egg based custard food, um, because because he loved his wife. And you know what? We love that. <laughs> That's just hecking adorable, frankly. Um, okay. Should I start adding in 
the green bits of plumage? And do I need a brush this small for it? And I think, honestly, I can probably do the slightly larger small brush for the green plumagey stuff. Let me see if I can get... I've got so, I've got so much green on this... Uh, on this palette already, but I want to make sure I've got like a really good representative shade of Kakapo green. So I'm going to start with quite a bit of the like Kiwi green, because I think that's kind of the realm that we're hanging out in for this guy. There's not, it's, there's not a ton of blue to this green. It airs somewhat more on the side of yellow, though I'm going to add a teensy bit of a bluey green to it, but not a ton, not a ton. And then I'm going to add more kiwi to it because I've decided I added too much of the bluey green. And yet more. And wet it down a little bit so I don't run out of it. This is going to be a process. Still the most popular custard powder in the UK probably, says Lino. Is it, honestly, there doesn't seem to be a ton of uh, competition for that. I don't really see... Certainly in my local supermarkets, I don't really see custard powders that aren't birds. So it certainly seems to be well liked. I see custard, like ready made custards. Um, I would say of the ones that aren't like you have to refrigerate them, like fresh custards that Ambrosia seems to have cornered the market on that. But in terms of powdered custard, it's like it's it's birds all the way. And you know what? Good for them. Because it works. It's a good custard powder. I dig it. Um, <laughs> and there's something, there's something I find almost kind of comforting, um, about the fact that like, so, so many, there are so many things in this country that it seems like there's just like a constancy to them where like, um, you, you have things like like bird's custard powder that has just persisted for like over a century. You know, that's, that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. Almost two centuries, in fact, because it's coming, it's coming up to like 190 years, I think, which is crazy when you consider how old the country I'm from is <laughs> in comparison. Like what? I'm adding too much paint to this color and now it's getting all ruined. Oh no. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a plumage brown. I'm trying to, I'm trying to enact a nice subtle plumage brown, which to be honest is quite muted. Oh, but that added way too much black to it. And now it's just kind of grayish and there's too much of it. Hold up. I'm just going to. Oh my goodness, I love that. Okay, so, like, how Worcester sauce has orange labels because the proper stuff is Lee and Parents. Yes, exactly, Lino, exactly. Um, oh, if you go, if you go to Denmark, says, uh, says Theo, Engelsk sauce. Is it? It's just English sauce. Is that custard or Worcester? Because either I could see. I think, I think custard... In, there's, like... Doesn't, doesn't French refer to, like, a pouring custard as just, like, creme anglaise? Or creme anglaise? I believe that's the case. And I also, I always find it very funny when, like, English chefs will refer to a, like, pouring custard as creme anglaise. Because I'm like, you're, you're English. Just call it custard. Yes, it's Worcester sauce. Made with real Angus. <laughs> I presume this line out. Oh no! Do not, please, do not eat angles. <laughs> um, unless you ask nicely first. I guess. Um. There's kind of a bit of a spray of. Somewhat more brownish plumage, like here, just kind of above, and then and then also kind of under under his eye a little bit. 
just a little darker here. Like that. Just, oh, oh, Beans, he's the cutest. He's just a very adorable little guy. This actually kind of tends a bit more to, towards greenish towards the edges of it, but that I think that'll do for now. And then he's got just these, these like chubby cheeks almost of slightly lighter, longer, fluffier feathers. Uh, Linus having a shower. I hope you have a lovely time and feel nice and, and pleasant um, <laughs> afterwards. Have a nice time. Thank you for the lick. Uh, I don't think Brown Sauce is as interesting to us as Theo. Uh, Brown Brown Sauce is also a very boring name. Um, uh, though I do have a box of something called Brun Sauce that's, uh, that's from uh, a Scandinavian grocery in London that I quite like the flavor of because it reminds me of the gravy that I used to buy in Canada. So this is also, is it called Engelsk Sauce because they looked at the, the word Worcestersh Worcestershire and decided no human mind can comprehend how to pronounce that word. I mean, my my knowledge of Danish is very limited, but if my knowledge of Danish tells me anything, they would probably find a way to not pronounce half of the letters in it. Um, which is my experience of looking at, seeing and looking at words in Danish and then hearing them spoken and being like, oh, I wasn't supposed to say any of those letters. Oops. Which is kind of fun. Anyways. Oh! Oh, he's already looking cute. Brunsos. Mmm. Danish is very non-consonant. -con yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, it's very... It... It... I, I feel like it makes it sound very sort of like blasé about things um just sort of the 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 way that a lot of consonants is kind of aren't very pronounced or kind of blur together at least to my to my non-danish ears um i think it's a very interesting language i feel like it would be quite difficult for me to learn properly um because of that british place names is 50 percent ignoring half the letters and 50 percent pronouncing the letters that are not there mm, mm, mm. One of my one of my go tos is always Loughborough. What's that? Why is it Loughborough? <laughs> if you don't know how Loughborough is spelled, it's spelled L O U G H B O R O U G H. Loughborough. <laughs> but also, you get like, you get um inconsistencies additionally in terms of things like um the the c e s t e r ending of a place name um and part of part of the inconsistency in place name pronunciation that you get in this country is to do with what what external peoples settled this town and gave it the name that has become the modern name for it but you get things like worcester which is spelled R O S. Hold on. R O W Worcester W O R C E S T E R Worcester, right? So I saw a word that was spelled C I R E N C E S T E R. And based on the fact that Worcester pronounces the, that last set of letters is just stir instead of sester, I was like, okay, so this place is like siren stir? And then I heard someone call it siren sester, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? Worcester, Lester, siren sester. Make it make sense, England. Come on. <laughs> ah! I hate it. I mean, I love it because it's fascinating. Bister is not Bicester. And it's also not nearly as exciting as a place that sounds like the, the town of Bys would be. Um, it has an outlet, a, like a designer outlet mall that I've never been to. Anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Samantha says, but then you have the opposite, Edinburgh, which gets a mystery extra syllable from nowhere. Mmm. Mmm. What, what, ha- It looks like it should be Edinburgh. Berg, 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 berg. Anyways. <laughs> My favorite was Bister, which I've lived near to for years, uh, says Samantha, before realizing it and Bister were the same place. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, patatas. Yes, please. <laughs> you can't complain. You've got... Ah. America. America. My friends... My friends over the ocean. Kansas. Arkansas. Make it make sense. Also, hi, Glade Rider. How are you doing? Welcome on in. <laughs> Anyways, that's in the U.S. Yes. <laughs> Whoops, there's a reason I didn't do geography, says Glade Rider. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, ooh, people are just naming foods now. Um, uh, Kutbullar and Lingonsilt, which sounds like a lovely meal. I haven't, I haven't had, I haven't had a meatball situation in a few weeks. And I do like a meatball situation with mashed potatoes and gravy and some lingonberries if I got them. Deliciousness. Maybe a little bit of salad just for fun. Oh. You kind of got it right. I kind of got it right. Hell yeah. You know what? I will take kind of. <laughs> uh, I think it was at some point and may still be illegal to pronounce Arkansas the same way as Kansas within the bounds of Arkansas, says Samantha. That, I love that so much. There is something I find genuinely fascinating about when, when there are just like places that have just really hyper specific local rules and laws, you know... That there is something happened there to make them put that law in place. And you know that that's going to be a story. (laughs) You know? I love that. I really do. I love that. (laughs) Like, I want to know what's the story behind that, you know? Does, was someone just being, like, really egregiously annoying about, like, oh, hello, welcome to Arkansas, and, like, harassing people by being, like, why are you mispronouncing Arkansas? So they had to just crack down on it and say, shenanigans, stop now, unless you want to get arrested, you know? <coughs> oh, no. <coughs> I've angered the spirit of America. I am so sorry, my former neighbor. Uh, please don't hurt me anymore. Huh. Oh, no. Mm. I'm going to take a sip of my beverage before I die. I'm going to try not to die. That This coffee remains delicious. Anyways. Right. Um, we've got some more bird textures and stuff to put in place. Um, I'm not going to do too much in the, in the way of, like, um... I'm going to save the shading and stuff for the end, uh, but I do want to just get sort of the colors in first, if I can. Um, Can I water this down a little bit so it's just a little bit more? So it's very subtle. Almost no color. Oh no, that's too much color. No, where did that come from? Ah, ah, blot, blot, blot. (laughs) Panic, panic, panic. Anyways, don't die, Sammy. Oh, no, so silly. I'm trying my best to not. Um, anyways. <sighs> right. Let's try it again. What brush? There's like, there's virtually no paint in you, and that's how I would like it to be. I want to be nice and subtle situations. Too wet, too wet. Okay. All right. I think that'll do for that. And this segment. Dry down a smidge. Okay. All right, I think I need to start doing... Do we need some sort of blot about for watercolor emergencies? We maybe do, but I don't know what that would look like. 
I honestly don't know what that would look like. Because usually it's just, I've just got like a really grody piece of tissue in my pocket that I've just been blotting things with. And it's just, it's just a messy piece of like paper towel that hangs out in my pocket when I paint. <sighs> I do use a new one every time I paint, don't worry. But, um, <clears throat> but it does just, it does just accumulate paint over time and that's kind of its job. Anyways, um, I'm going to take a sip of my tea. It's probably also now very cold, but is nicer cold than the coffee is, so. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mmm. <sighs> Deliciousness. Delightful. Okay. It's time to put some green into the world. Now, I think I can mostly just fill in kind of rangy here's entire head with just green and probably just lay some texture on top of it when it comes time to do so i'll kind of blend that out i think blend out blend in all that good stuff Okay. Oh, look at you starting to look like a little kakapo. Isn't that lovely? I hope it's lovely. I hope it's not bad. Okay. Can I can I can you can can you be a little bit wetter, Mr. Brush? Thank you. Oh no, they're cute. It also looks much greener in real life than it does on the um the camera for some reason. Which is really weird. Cause to y'all that probably looks like very, very yellow, but to me it is definitely a green situation. Which is wild. But here we are. Just blending, just blending these bits out here where it sort of meets his little puffy cheeks. And a little bridge of his nose beak area as well. Okay, wicked. Sweet. Good. I almost wonder if I do want to maybe make it a slightly, a slightly greener green, because it is reading very, very yellow on camera. Which, as I say, it isn't, it isn't IRL, but... Do I want to maybe add just a scooch more blue to the green just to make it like just that much greener? That might not be a bad thing. It doesn't need to be. I mean, nothing I paint ever is going to be wholly photorealistic anyways. So, yeah, that, that looks a little bit greener, doesn't it? For some reason, the kiwi green just in and of itself is very, um, reads very yellow on camera, even though in real life it is very, very distinctly a green color. Strange, but true. There we go. Oh. Oh no, it's cute. Silly, Silly says, love the kakapo. Oh, thank you. Oh, hello. Silly says, they just re re revealed a whole Rain World DLC, like a new DLC that is being released. That's exciting. Oh my goodness. And right in the middle of Rain World Art Month, or right at the end of Rain World Art Month as well, I guess. Because it is quite close to the end of Rain World Art Month now. Oh my goodness. What is, t what is time chat? I just, I don't know. Do you? Does does anyone here know what time is? Because I am genuinely fairly uncertain. <laughs> would would that I could say what was time, but I cannot, for I I'm not sure. Okay. 
Now, most, most of the plumage here wants to be green. But it's not 100% completely uniform. Um, can I water this down as well a little bit? There we go. So I'm going to try and plop in some, like, feathery dutes leaving the odd gap here and there um, for the bits that, that are not. What type of watercolor paints are you using, asked Thunderpup? Uh, today I am using the Ink Tents uh, uh, Paint Pan Pocket Palette set from Derwent. It's, uh, it's nice when I just want, like, straight ahead, fairly adjustable colors that will layer well. Um, and it also was not very expensive, which I love for me, <laughs> but it's also like, it's good quality paints, which I appreciate. Um, also, hey, Thunderpop, how's it going? Lovely to see you. Welcome in. Also, thank you very much for the lurk, Joe. Much appreciated. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely Thursday. It's wonderful to see you. Happy lurking. Okie dokie. Okay. I'm going to try and fill in most of this but leaving some blanks as would be not blanks but some some bits that are not um some bits that aren't green because such is the case if you look at the bird it's it's got some some interesting and some quite fun variations to the uh to the plumage so I want to try and reflect that. I do have I do have a reference picture of this this specific bird that I'm painting. So I'm trying to um, notice it does get a little bit greener just towards the ends of the the wing feather tips. So I'm gonna try and reflect that as well. <laughs> And I'm sorry if I get quiet, it's because I'm concentrating on feathery dudes. My moderator slash spouse, I think, wants my attention. One moment, please. Yes, darling. Hmm? Ah, because it, this is all that was in that giant-ass box? Seriously? That's so tinny! Wow! That's tiny! I did think that was a very lightweight box. It was 99 cents. It was, wow. Okay, so my moderator slash spouse received um, an order from Games Workshop, which, to give you an idea of the scale, the dimensions of the item were about the size of this A6 piece of card. The box was about the size of the area that that is my uh, my camera here, so... Yeah, it's literally one of these in a box that was about this size and, like, you know, sort of reasonably thick as well. Like, why? We wonder, we wonder if perchance Games Workshop just don't have any smaller boxes than that, because it was very... It, se it seemed like overkill for the amount of stuff that was not inside it, you know? A little... A little surprising, I think. Anyways, I always think it's weird when that happens. It's like, did you, did you, did it need to be in a box this size? It could have gone through the letter box, mates. What are you doing? What are you doing? Never mind. At least I was here to receive the box. Uh, cause I also had a, I was, I would, I contemplated actually going, going out earlier today and taking care of some business, but, um, I, I also had a delivery expected today. So, um, I, I really didn't want to miss it. So I just hung around and was here instead. And that's all right. Because I got to make a strawberry and rhubarb tart, which I'm very excited to be eating later. I would share a picture of it, but it is the very opposite of picturesque. It is not pretty. It looks like the pastry is nice and crisp and flaky, which is great. 
it looks like the um, filling is, you know, cooked as it should be, which is fantastic. It also just looks like kind of an eyesore. <laughs> so, you know, uh, whoops. <laughs> Never mind. Anyways. They used to have smaller boxes, but who knows, maybe they've run out of that packing box. Maybe, maybe. It just it just seemed like a very uh a a, a large use of space for a very small amount of item. Just getting some nice feathery textures in here. And this soft little soft little friend shaped head. There we go. Oh my goodness. D does this not say, hello, I am so befriendable. I think this little guy looks incredibly befriendable. I would like to be this little guy's friend. Very much. Um, fun fact, this is, this is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, inspired by the Kakapo that I adopted as part of their annual sort of adoption uh, donation program to the, like, recovery program, uh, for, you know, helping, um, helping the population get on its feet. It's very adorable little feats. <laughs> um, but, uh, but even though this is, this is technically my adopted bird son, he is actually older than me. Um, he's... We don't know when he was born, but he was first discovered in 1981. So, there you go. <laughs> Anyways. Um, and I'm going to be 40 this year, so that is older than me. My goodness, what a, what a venerable gentleman, this buddy, who I love with my whole heart. And I can't really see what his tail feathers look like, so I'm just going to have to kind of make a guess. There we go. Um, but anyways. <sighs> I hope y'all are having good Thursdays. How is everybody? How are you doing? How have you been? How goes? I hope it goes good. Hold up. Can I maybe can I maybe blend this out a little bit? Oh, that's too wet. Hold up. That's too wet. There's paint hiding in here. Oh, jeez. Kind of like to Blend that out a little bit. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Anyways. Um, right. This is not a scientifically accurate bird. I feel like that should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways, just in case anyone wants to, um, actually anything to do with the way I'm painting this bird. I'm trying my best, but it is obviously fairly stylized <laughs> uh for tis the way i like to paint birds um and also honestly bird plumage is in in many cases one of the most complicated things to try and paint it really it really is it's it is deeply complicated and i i do try but I'm also aware of uh, my limitations, the limitations of the medium, and also just the fact that, like, it's it's fine if it's not 100% bang on perfect. This isn't a scientific illustration. This is just me being like, you know what I really wanted to do? I really want to paint a bird. And I've had a hankering to paint a bird since like, a week into that bookshop that we spent so long working on. So, I'm painting it now. <laughs> Yay! Anyways, um, 
Is it just me or are mini eggs very expensive this year? I mean, everything's very expensive, but mini eggs seem very expensive this year. Just putting that out there. Um, I bought a bag of mini eggs and it really doesn't feel like it yielded that much, but damn. It was, uh, it was not cheap. It was not cheap to get them mini eggs. So, uh, yeah. Love that for me. And when I say I love that for me, I mean boo. Very Attention. pecking and Twitch user Sammy Kelsch. Choppers. Devin Streamy Woodlands. Hello and welcome on in Raiders. Hello, hello. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for the raid, Devin. Lovely to see you. What were you up to today? Welcome on in. Hello, friends. Let me get a shout out for you in the chat. If I can remember how I do it. It would help if I... Okay. Typing and speaking at the same time is not my forte. But there we go. Got a shout out for Devin in the chat. Devin said there would be popcorn. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> now I have to find popcorn. All I have is bird. I'm so sorry. Anyways, let me say hello to everyone who's coming with the raid. Hello to uh, Millie Milkers. Hello. Welcome on in. How are you doing? Lovely to see you. Hello. Hello. And Devin, of course. Hello. And Marky Mark. Lovely to see you as well. Welcome on in. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm so sorry. I don't have any more popcorn snacks. I think I've got some seaweed crisps in the cut in the kitchen, but that probably isn't going to cut it. Um, <laughs> and Swaz, thank you very much indeed for coming in as well on the raid. Lovely to see you. Welcome on in, everyone. Hello, hello. Um, <laughs> it's lovely to see you. For anyone who's new here, hi, my name is Twitch user Sammy Kelsch. I'm a variety streamer. I do cozy art streams on Mondays and Thursdays. I do cozy game streams on Fridays and occasionally on Sunday. But not this Friday because it's a holiday and, um, I am going to be off doing holiday stuff. But normally we would be playing Hollow Knight. Um, right now we are painting a kakapo, which is one of my favorite types of bird. They're very, very sweet and I love them with my whole heart. Um, and yeah, I hope you're all having a wonderful Thursday. Uh, Mark said, I figured it'd be a good match. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, thank you for suggesting. Thank you for suggesting. And, and, uh, and Devin, indeed, thank you very much for entrusting me with your lovely, lovely people. It's lovely to see y'all. Um, we were just chatting and sorting some craft supplies. Oh, super rad. If there's anything you want to share, like if you've got like an Instagram or something that you want us to take a look at, I would love to do that. You can whisper a link in my direction. Um... And we would love to share. I would love to show you what my art looks like when it's actually done. Oh, Devin, thank you very much for the follow. And let me get another shout out for you as well, because I can do two shout outs. If I can spell correctly, that would be great. Spelling, like typing and speaking at the same time is something that my brain really struggles with, but hopefully that works. Oh, Devin says I'm a big burb fan. Me too. Burbs are the best. I'm very blessed to live in a neighborhood where we get a lot of burbs, uh, and there's a lot out and about at the moment. It's so nice. It's so nice. <laughs> that horn noise, where is that from? It's so familiar. Okay, so almost all of my alert sounds are from um, old ITV iDents. If that is something that is a special interest of yours, it's probably not. It's, I think, one of my most niche, uh, long-standing <laughs> special interests. Um, I think that one is channel television, but don't quote me on that. But I'm, I think it's channel television. Ah, oh, geez. Oh, testing me. <laughs> but anyways, that's what it's from. Um, that may or may not be helpful. I don't know. Anyways, but, uh, when, when, when I have finished paintings, sometimes they look like these. Um, these are some things that I did recently. This is Terry. He's a friend of the channel. He's a, he's a forg. As you can see by his fr froggy appearance, he is a mage. And he really likes chilling and practicing self-care and practicing spells and making himself nice cups of tea like he has here. Um, what else? This is a piece I did recently for somebody's birthday. Um, it's Mothman, obviously. <laughs> this is These are some gnome husbands who also hang out quite a bit on stream. Um, they're married, they're very happy, and they live in a little cottage in the Enchanted Forest, as you do. Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh. I also do, like, landscapey stuff that takes me an absurdly long time. This was, uh, I just wanted to do some mountains, and specifically I wanted to do some little guys tobogganing down a mountain, as you do. This is very normal of me. Anyways, uh, so that's the kind of silly nonsense that we get up to here on, on the stream. Uh, but yeah, anywho. 
Um, it's about, it says, I don't think it is from it, but it kind of makes me think of Monty Python's Holy Grail vibes. Ooh, interesting. Forks! The Billy Milk is hell yeah. Cute Forks. It's Devin. Oh, thank you very much. Frog! It says, says Mark. Yes, that is Terry. He's a friend of the stream, and we love him very much. Um, <laughs> that painting in the top left there is a real cutie. I don't know which one that was, but thank you, Samantha. <laughs> much appreciated. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, hope you had a good stream. Lovely to see you. As I say, if there's anything you want to share, feel free, uh, to pop it in a whisper of, uh, but of course, uh, there's no pressure whatsoever to do so if, uh, you are not feeling so inclined. Anyways, uh, so I'm painting this kakapo today. We are just putting in, um his uh his plumage this all came about because uh just before christmas back in like the end of november i adopted a kakapo which sounds weird but it is this like symbolic adoption situation that the kakapo recovery team um do every year to like raise money for their uh recovery efforts working with these beautiful very special uh, birds that, uh, very much need some help with keeping their population numbers, um, as big as they should be. And they, their, their numbers, their numbers went down quite a bit for a while, but they are going back up, importantly. And that is really, really good because we want to see this population thriving and happy and adorable and just having a nice time. <laughs> because they are they are very special creatures um so that's really so it's really encouraging to see when they are uh when they're doing doing all right anyways um so so i donated and adopted a bird who is i can show you the photo that i'm working from um because he is he is apparently an elusive little so-and-so but he's been, uh, he looks like that. He's a very special guy and I'm, uh, very, very happy to have contributed to his well-being. Uh, so I thought I would do a portrait. Um, he, uh, he, he has apparently made lots of babies with, uh, with a number of, uh, of ladybirds. Um, specifically... Uh, specifically two, two lady birds named Wendy and Zephyr. I don't know if they're a thruple or what, like, the situation is going on there, but, uh, but we love it. Lino says, critically endangered because of introduced predators to New Zealand, but on the recovery. Yes, exactly. And we're very happy to, personally, I'm very happy to support their recovery because they're very sweet, very special, and very, very lovely. And also, you know... I think, I think we owe it, we owe it to, to the creatures to, to be nice to them and to give them the means to thrive, especially, especially when it was people fault that other creatures were introduced into the local area that they did not know how to defend themselves against, which is why the population went down. You know, they've, they've got problems with, with things that were introduced that, the local wildlife did not know how to deal with. So anything we can do to kind of, you know, compensate for that, I think is good and important. Anyways, so special since Devin. I know I love them so much. I really, really do. I just love birds. I just, I, you know, I was, I was never, I wouldn't say I was ever like indifferent to birds, but I wasn't like super big on like bird watching or like bird stuff in particular like more so than any other creatures or things when I was younger and then sort of when I hit like my early to mid 30s it's like a switch flipped in my silly little brain and suddenly it was just like you love birds <laughs> birds are the best you prepare to just be so excited every time you see a bird in your life now like it is the most the most awesome thing just to witness the existence of a bird. <laughs> and it is. I love them so much. Tee. Tee. Birds are so good. Bird watching just sneaks up on you, says Devin. Genuinely, it super does. It's wild. I was not expecting to be this 
invested in burbs, but here we are. They are, they are just the gosh dang bestest. They really are. They're so heckin' cute. Um, and so sweet. I just bought a window feeder to put in my window system. And, oh my goodness, I love that for you. I've fallen in love with Blue Jays so hard recently, says Lux. Oh, I think it's an old person thing. Yes, yes, it is. It is, genuinely. You hit a certain age and it's just birds. Birds are for you now. <laughs> I mean, my grandma had budgies, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, now the, the tail feathers are kind of more brown-ish, so I think what I think what I'm gonna do is kind of give them like a wash with this like lighter brown, and then do put some pop some details on top of that. Maybe if I could just grate, gradient out a little bit of green towards sort of this, this end of it. And just, just blend that out. Just blend it out. There we go. Just like that. Yay! That's tail feathers. They're, they're nowhere near done. <laughs> Anyways. But Blue Jays, yes, wonderful. Also, hello, Lux. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It is wonderful to see you. Welcome, welcome. We are making things happen for this little guy who is older than me, and yet somehow I was allowed to adopt him. What's up with that? <laughs> I am not complaining. I'm very happy I got to adopt this little guy, because, oh my goodness, what a special little buddy. Absolutely lovely. Um, right. This brown is almost what I'm after, but it wants to be a little... a little bit less of a bright brown. If that Does, br does bright brown make sense as a way to kind of conceive of the way that a brown can be. Because I personally think that bright brown makes sense, but I don't know if bright brown actually makes sense outside of my own head. Uh -huh. Is very sunny, says Lux, and it's the last day of the week because thanks killing Jesus. I, yep. Mm -hmm. Tis indeed. It is, it is for, at least in this country, certainly it is a long weekend. Um, this weekend, which... I'm looking forward to because I like not having things to do. I don't I don't know where that sentence was going. I'm sorry. Um, but no, that's true. I like not having things to do. That's fair enough. Anyways, I want I want to water down this brush just a, just a smidge and just a smidge and I want to water down this brush and just maybe get some slightly slightly darker contrasting plumage. Kind of just, this brush is too wet. Come on, come on, there we go. Some slightly darker plumage just along the bottom of this kind of fluffy, fluffy tuft portion here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay, cool. Cool. That's all I wanted to do with that. Um, you can have murky brown, so having bright, clear browns is a logical corollary of that, says uh, says Lino. Hell yeah. Um, not in the USA, which... Well, the US... Wait, the, the States doesn't get Easter weekend as, like, day off time? Really? Huh. I had no idea. I just assumed that they did, because a lot of, a lot of the US is quite... Is quite Christianly religious, and they do they do other religious holidays like Christmas and stuff, don't they? No, we don't. Says Devin. Oh, oh goodness, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You'd think for a Jesus nation, but no. Wow, interesting, interesting. Do you still get? Do you still do like? Do you still get chocolate eggs and stuff? I hope you still at least get chocolate eggs and stuff, even if you don't get like holidays. Um, Interesting. Wow, I'm learning things today. <laughs> I I'm learning so much right now. That's wild. Um anyways, I'm sorry. Giving you time time off is far too anti-capitalist for America. Oh jeez, I'm so I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I really am. Um It's it is it is good to have days off, but then uh you know, the states do get bank holidays that we certain most certainly do not, so 
I'm sure I'm sure it more or less balances out. Or at least I hope it does. The the UK is a little silly about the distribution of bank holidays, by which I mean um we get quite a lot of bank holidays around sort of like the the March, April, May cluster. Like we get, so we get Easter weekend, which is usually like end of March to sometime in April. Then we get two bank holidays in the month of May. Then nothing until August. And then after the August bank holiday, nothing until Christmas. Because we don't get Thanksgiving or anything, which I guess is the trade-off for, um, the U.S. doesn't get Easter Britain doesn't get Thanksgiving, which which makes sense because of the the origins of the Thanksgiving holiday, which I won't get into here because eh, we'll be here all night. And frankly, I don't need that. <laughs> but anyways, um, I am gonna need to make salad at some point, but I do wanna I do wanna finish this piece because it's been quite a while since I started and finished an entire painting in the space of a single stream, and you know what? It feels rather good to potentially be able to do that so I would love to if I can I will yeah this is looking like a cacapo's tail I think I think it's doing all right we get some of the lowest number of public holidays in the world says Lino it's just that's just hacking grim I mean we do we do get a reasonable number of I think Personally, I think I would love to have more vacation days. Um, I was speaking with my mother a little while ago about like, how many, how many holiday days do y'all get in a year? And she was describing it to me and I was like, I'm sorry, what? It's like, cause, cause here it's, you know, it's a, it's a good few weeks cumulatively of leave days that you get in like a working year and in Canada it's like 10 days of annual leave in a year which just feels bad man like I'm sorry what Samantha says apparently the U.S. gets six federal public holidays with time off per year versus the UK's eight, though as far as I can tell, the US ones aren't actually required paid time off, just generally honor honored by businesses. That's another, that's another complicating thing, I think, when it's like, but then again, a lot of like the, the bank holidays here, you don't necessarily, a lot of places are still open on the days that are technically bank holiday days. Um, I don't really know exactly how that works. Um, but I do know that they don't technically, you'll see, especially places like coffee shops and that kind of thing, um, will be open on most of the like bank holiday days. Um, but I don't know whether, I don't know whether that means that, that the like people who work there get like time off in lieu or do they get paid extra? to work on those days. I say that I did actually work a retail job over a Christmas holiday period once when I was quite new to living in this country and really struggling to find work. Um, I did try my hand at working in, in a shop for a bit. It went really horribly and I had a miserable time because I am not apparently suited to that kind of work. Um, I was politely asked to not work there anymore, <laughs> which oof, but, um, but it was like, it was open on, I think every day, but Christmas day, the shop was open. But if it was one of the days, it's like kind of a holiday day, like, like boxing day or new year's day, you got, um, you got paid at a higher rate to work on those days, which was, I think, a reasonable as some as someone who didn't have any sort of family business during those periods was a perfectly acceptable trade off for me anyways um so yeah i was i was i was cool with that cuz honestly that job paid peanuts so i was happy to get more peanuts <laughs> 
Um, the UK has a mandatory minimum of paid holidays per year, whereas the US, no such minimum. Thank you, Europe. I, I love Europe. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good place to be. Anyways, um, just trying to get the feathery textures in, in and around where it feels like they should be. This feathery texture is kind of intermittent. I mean, there's probably more of it than I'm really properly adding in here, but... I feel like, I feel like this, this gets the, it's a good shorthand. It's getting the job done, which is the most important thing for me anyways, I think. Slightly concerned that I'm going to run out of this brown paint. Because if I have to make more of it, it's not going to be a perfect match. And is that going to look weird? I don't know. Trying to find the bits that are kind of not very colored in and add these sort of darker colored accents there. Does that make sense? I think it does. Anyways, I hope wherever you are, you are uh, able to avail yourself of sufficient rest and feel appreciated by your workplaces because that's important. This bird is so stinking cute. Sometimes, sometimes I'm working on a piece and I'm like, ah, everything about it is bad and I don't like it. And then sometimes I'm working on a piece and I'm like, you know, this is fine. This piece is fine. I think this piece is fine. <laughs> I do. I do. I hope it's fine. I hope y'all think my, my painting is fine. <laughs> Anyways, I'm quite enjoying just the, like, just the action of adding in these little bits of feathery texture. It's quite, it's quite pleasant to do, actually. <laughs> like, it's, it's quite relaxing. Finding little bits where I just want to add in just some funky little brush strokes. And hope that it looks all right. Anyways, speaking of things that I'm looking forward to, not that I was, I don't know why I said that, but I am looking forward to my my din dins tonight. Um, because I haven't I haven't done like a Japanese salad situation in a wee while, and it is so stinking delicious. If you've never done, like, the Japanese salad dressing where you take ginger and miso and rice vinegar and some carrot and a um, little salt and sugar and a little bit of oil and you waz it up together in a blender, it is so good. It is such a good dressing situation. It's very cozy. Um, your, Lino says, your kakapo is lovely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was very kind of you to say. I appreciate it. Okay. I'm watering this down quite a bit, but I want my brush to be not too wet, so I'm just going to blot out quite a bit of the moisture there. I'm going to... Oh, no, there's a piece of lint on the end of my brush now. Let me just get rid of that real quick. And I'm just going to... Just going to add a little extra shading around these bits here. Because they're looking a little bit pale now, I feel like. So I kind of want to just make sure that there's enough happening here. There we go. That is That is so subtle that I don't know if you can tell whether that made a difference. Always a bit of bother when you get a bit of lint chocolate on your brush. Oh man, I wish it was lint chocolate. Mmm, delicious. Okay. Um, it is time for very tiny details for which I need the tiniest brush I own. So first of all, I'm gonna need just, just black. It's just black. 
going to gray it out a fair bit, but uh, I want to add some footy, some footsy textures here because they've got very cute little foots. Got their little toe claws, that, and then, and then there's just a the lovely little footsie textures. I don't know what else to call them other than footsie textures, so I'm just calling them footsie textures. There we go. That's footsie textures if I ever did see any. I wish I had lint chocolate right now. I wish I had any kind of chocolate, really. I like chocolate. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm a fan. Okay. There we go. That's that's some good footsie textures, I think. Um, I also would like to just actually paint in this little guy's eye. Because I think it'll look quite a bit more complete when the eye has been painted in. Oh, God. This bit is scary. This bit is super scary. Because if you accidentally paint in bits that you don't want painted in, when you're doing your little bird buddy's cute little eye, they might end up looking super weird. And I would not like that. I want to do justice to this sweet little buddy, you know? <laughs> Parrots have scaled feet's very texture, says uh, Lino. I know, they're, the, they're like these amazing sort of, the, the whole thing is very soft and fluffy, and then you get to the feet bits and it's just like claws. It's <laughs> so cool, I love them. I love, I love this little guy so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I've got the eyeball now. I think it's line weight time. I think tis line weight time. How exciting. Or at least I'm excited. I don't know if anybody else is excited, but I'm very excited by line weight time. Hell yeah. All right. There we go. Let me make sure that my brush is holding a nice, very fine, fine line little point. And then... I'm going to start with the feet because I can. Do their feet look perfectly feet like? Um, and, uh, listen. Um, or should I do all the line weight first or should I shade and then line? I think maybe I should shade and then line. Oh, geez. Well, I'm going to finish lining the feet. And then I'm going to go back and, and shade in some stuff. Because um, I've decided I'm doing it wrong. Oh no. Oh, beans. Cheese pizza. What a silly so-and-so. Also, I love that being from New Zealand, they're the only parrot species that went, yeah, now nah, we don't need to fly anymore. Mm, yep. Well, you know, when you live in a place where you're pretty safe, honestly... I can kind of, I can kind of see that. I can, I can get behind that, that thinking, that feeling, you know, it's like, Hey, we're, we're fine. Like, you know, yeah, nah, no worries, mate. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. And now some little shadowy bits, shadowy bits. Shading in the bits that are, that give our piece some dimension. Tra la la. How obvious will the shading be when it's done? I hope enough. I think, I think that enough. But I do, I do really appreciate this, um, that this paint is, um, it's quite permanent when it's, uh, when it's dry. 
So you know you're not going to end up in a situation where it's like lifting when you try to layer. And I love, I love to layer, so. Such as here. Ta-da! I'm going to get some shading under this little puffy, puffy tufts. I've obviously stylized out the puffy tuft quite a bit. I just thought it would be fun to not produce a fully photorealistic bird, but to make it a little bit stylized. It's a little bit cute. Hopefully it's a little bit cute. Um, okay. I need a different shade color now. Oh, wait, actually. No, there's still, there's still green bits that need to be shaded because this bit just under here will be okay okay i think i think that's it for that color so clean that out a little bit but yeah there's so i think i mentioned earlier i feel i feel a real affinity for like the flightless genre of bird because like honestly mood <laughs> It's just like, hmm, what's a defining characteristic of a bird? It flies. Not me. <laughs> oh, geez, that's way off camera. You can't even see it now. Oh, no. Um, sorry about that. Oh, that's way too wet. Hold up. I'm just going to blot that down. Actually, that, that works. I'll leave that as a shade. Okay, cool. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, sort of maybe, maybe the tail feathers at the back. Because they're kind of... They're kind of behind us a little bit. And they're kind of, they're kind of in layers. Lovely, lovely layers. As Mary Berry would no doubt say. About this very special bird. Okay, cool. Um... Is that it for the shades? I guess I could add a little bit of a shadow onto the actual um, branch that it's on as well. So I'll do that. Maybe should have used a bigger brush for this, but oh well. I have started and I suppose I shall continue as I mean to go on. Oh no. And I mean to go on perilously, I guess. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, cheese pizza. Well. That's not actually imparting very much color at all. There we go. I would like it a little darker, please. Thank you. Not a super dramatic shadow or anything, but just, hello. It's there. Okay, that'll do. That'll do fine. Is it ugly? <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Never mind. It's all fine. Okay. And now, it's line time. Let's go. I think... I think I'll do the brownie, brownish, brownie bits first, maybe for the remaining lines just cuz any particular reason no not really that's not nearly enough color left in this paint so I'm gonna have to pick up a butt ton more paint to make it happen yeah man so much come get get in my brush come on get on in there okay Okay. That's more like it. Okay, I think we got there. Anyways. Um, cool. Line time. Let's see how we go. This is the this is the bit where I realize that uh, I'm painting entirely off camera and I need to <laughs> need to adjust. 
apologies for that. It was not my intention at all. Anyways. I really hope that I really hope that that tart that I baked earlier turned out okay. Um in terms of the in terms of like the technique and stuff for it, I really kind of winged it. Wong, wonged it? Wong, winged winged. Is that is that anything? Is that a word you can say? Joe says burb. Hell yeah, it burb. Hell yeah, it burb. This is a very good burb. A special friend-shaped bird. I just love burb. Anyways, wanged wong wang chung tonight. Everybody have fun tonight. Hope y'all are having fun. Everybody have fun tonight. Everybody have fun. Everybody have fun tonight. I'm gonna stop singing because I don't want to get copyright struck for my terrible singing of the Wang Chung song. <laughs> but I hope everybody has fun tonight. Anyways. Okay. Eh. Terrifying. Okay. There. We have we have lined the little puffy cheek. All burb are good burb, says Samantha. I could not agree more, my friend. Absolutely they are. All burb are indeed good burb. The best burb is just a burb that exists. If his burb is good burb. There you go. That's my that's my wisdom for today. If is burb, is good burb. Now you know. Okay. 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 This, again, I'm doing a bit that does me in nervous, because this is... It's kind of important. The face is generally the focal point of a creature. So you want it to look, you know good <laughs> and in and and in, in, in as much as I want this one to look good um, I'm being very very careful if I get quiet it's because I'm concentrating oh no that's a big old blobo hold up hold up hold up hold up oh no <sighs> okay I think I think I salvaged it okay there we go Got the little, the little weird n nose bump. The best burb are ratites, then come the corvids, and then comes, uh, comes the anatids. All, I, I think this is good burb. This is one of those interests where I haven't collected a lot of bird facts. I just know which ones I think are cute. Um... So I apologize for any burb knowledge that I do not have anyways. Um, but is, is burb, burb head. Um, gonna try and get a bit of a nice clean outline on his eye as well. Which again is mildly terrifying. There. Okay. I think that'll do. I think that'll do. Yay. Good. Good job. Me. Good job. My little bird friend. <laughs> what an absolute little guy. Right. Um, this is the paint color I was using to do the plumage. I think I might... How can I... Just deepen it slightly. I added just a touch of racing green to it, so it's a little bit, um, so it's a little bit darker for the line white. Just, just to make sure that our little burb friend stands out sufficiently from the background, which I would very much like to be the case. 
because he is the focal point of the painting. So I'd quite like you to see the painting and then look at it and go, oh, that's a cacapar. What a lovely bed. What a good friend. Anyways, uh, apologies for that voice. And sorry for jump scaring anyone who may be in the chat who uh, is in my D and D party, because that is very close to my character voice when I D and D. There we go. Um, I love a good dungeon dragon, as you may know. In fact, I did have a, I did have, I do have a painting that that I, I started couple days ago and I was like well if I need a backup painting today I do have I do have a painting that I started work on the other day which is this is some some fresh character art of my D&D &D character all I've painted in so far is their their goblin-y flesh but you get the idea um they have a badass leather biker vest and they're a sorcerer and uh they are a blacksmith by trade Specializing in knives and uh, a, a very big interest in knife safety, most importantly. Thunderpuffs is so cute. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, Samantha says, Do you think Kakapos and Kiwis have a burb rivalry going on, or is it a mutual burby respect? I think it's probably burby respect because they're certainly. They certainly don't seem like they'd be enemies, you know. And they're both very cute. We do have a Kiwi emote. Uh, thank you very much, Thunderpuff. I really appreciate it. It was very kind of you to say. We do have a... We've got a Kiwi emote. I'm wondering if, I, if I'm going to have to make a Kakapo emote so that they don't feel left out. Or maybe maybe a stream sticker as well of the Kakapo, because we've, we've got a Kiwi stream sticker as well. Um, I don't want this beautiful... This beautiful, majestic creature to feel in any way, shape, or form left out here. Because they are also very, very special. But I would say their their flightless their flightless cousins, the uh, the kiwi, are certainly the most the the, the more well known uh, of the two. But both very special. I don't know if I ever get to New Zealand, I'm gonna be just I'm just, I'm just gonna want to bird watch the whole time, which is wild. But I'll probably see, like, the kinds of birds that are just, like, everywhere and super common, like, in the park and stuff. And I'll be like, oh my god, get a look at this bird! <laughs> just be, like, freaking out. And they're like, yeah, it's just a fantail. They're everywhere. And I'm like, but this guy's cute! <laughs> I love a fantail as well, by the way. They are very cute. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, the kiwi, the kiwi in chat is enjoying a nice cup of tea and a biscuit, which I love to see it. Delightful. Um... But hold on, let me... Please, please, please enjoy the absolute heckin' adorableness of... Assuming I can get the picture to load, just load the pic... There, okay. The picture is kinda small. I'm zooming it in a little bit, but, um... Nope, that's my Instagram. Where did I... Wait, where... Oh, I put it in the wrong tab. Hold up. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is more complicated than it's supposed to be. Anyways, ta-da! My, my Instagram again, uh, I guess, but... Oh, there we go! Fantail! How heckin' cute are those little buddies? I love them so much. Anyways. Um, but this, this little guy is coming along quite nicely, I think. I wasn't sure how this painting was gonna turn out when I, when I started it. When I did the sketch, I was like, mm. Then I made it as far as the background, and I was like, mm. But now that we're getting line weight onto this guy, I'm feeling like, yeah. So small, says Thunderpuff. I know, they're so tiddle. They're so tiddle. It's so cute. So, so, so stinking cute. Okay. Gonna turn this little guy this way. His name is, uh, the, the, the bird that this is based on, this portrait is based on, is named Orangi, by the way. Which is why I, which is why I chose this bird to adopt, 
because it happened to be um, the name of my D&D character's familiar, which they named after their dad. So that name, it, it called to me. I was like, oh, sweet. Kakapo says hello. <laughs> okay. Going to going to line down this um, branch that he's standing on. Maybe just add like a little bit of texture to it actually as well. I think might not go amiss. Pick up some of this what's left of this brown paint here. And just get some nice rough branchy texture going on. Because this, I think, is quite a rough old branch. Quite a big branch. On a big old tree. There we go. Like so. And, as I say, maybe just, maybe just pop some. Oh, that is, that was a huge bead of water I was not expecting on the brush. Just now. Utterly terrifying stuff. Oh no, I love the detail on the feathers. Such a handsome little friend to Samantha. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's honestly, it just feels really good having having been able to do something sort of in the space of a single stream. Because uh, if you've been here before, you know that for the last, like, month, I was working on the same painting. <laughs> and while I do very much enjoy doing those pieces that have, like, a, just a butt-ton of detail and take absolutely forever as well... There is something that just the satisfaction in actually completing a work feels real good. <laughs> so I'm quite happy with this from that perspective that it was just, I was able to kind of just knock this out fairly quickly. Not, not without, you know, putting effort and love into it. Obviously when I say knock it out, I don't mean that I didn't try to make it nice, but, um, it was a, a much quicker process than the last thing that I did, which, um, which you will see the completed version of at some point fairly soon, because I did end up having to take a couple of hours off stream just to finish it um, earlier this week, because I couldn't quite get it done during the course of the stream, which was, oh, ever so deeply frustrating. But we did get there, thankfully. And it did feel real good when we did. Okay. Is that is there enough mossy texture in this or do I want to maybe lay a little mossy texture over top? I think what I might do what I might do is just get a really good thick good thick coat of paint on my brush here and actually just lay a couple of slightly brighter mossy dutes over the top and also get a little bit kind of obscuring the line weight slightly. Just, just to make sure that you know that there is moss on here. And this paint does layer quite nicely. It's nice and transparent, but you can get some, you can get some good layering. Okay. Yeah, I think that works better. That's so subtle. I don't know if you can, uh, if you can see it, but never mind. Um, so cute, says Devin. I've been listening and walking. Oh, lovely. I hope you're having a nice walk. I hope if you're, if you're walking outdoors, I hope the weather is better than it is here, uh, where I am in the enchanted forest because it is super windy and super rainy and super nasty out there. And I kind of, I don't regret my choice of meal for today, uh, cause I'm going to be making a salad but I also am kind of like, mm, would this have been a better day to make like a cozy rice type dish, which is I'm making, I'm making some, um, I'm making, oh, what is something with paneer, matter paneer. That's it. I'm making matter paneer tomorrow, which I'm very excited for as well. Because we haven't had paneer in the house in a while. I, I'm lactose intolerant, so I kind I don't do, I mean, we have a lot of milk in the house and I probably shouldn't have as much as I do, but, um, but, uh, I'm having paneer tomorrow for the first time in quite a while and I'm very excited because I heckin' love paneer. It's so good. 
It's so good. It's so good. It just, it has that, it has the texture. It doesn't really taste of anything in and of itself. So you can surround it with nice things like garlic and ginger and turmeric and other spices and peas. So many peas in a lovely tomatoey sauce. Mm. And rice. It's going to be so good. But I'm excited for my Japanese salad tonight as well, which is going to be also very delicious. Anyways, I noticed, I feel like the, okay, hold up. I was going to call this done, but I've just noticed the, the shading on the tail has kind of disappeared into it. So I'm going to, I'm going to basically do it again. Because I feel like, I feel like it kind of just faded in. We didn't really, we can't really see it. And what's the point in my shading things if you can't really see it? That's better. That's much better, I think. Just going to maybe blend it out a little bit if I can. Just blend out. Okay. Sorry, got quiet there for a second because I was thinking about blending it out. But I feel, I feel like that's better. Are you going to frame it, says Thunderpuff? Honestly, I don't frame a lot of my work. It usually ends up just kind of being stored someplace. And a digital version of it is posted on the internets. But I don't, I don't frame a lot of my pieces. Partially because I just don't have space to really display them in the house nicely. So, yeah. Um, but, like, maybe... I think if people like this, I might end up doing a print of it in my shop. I've got a shop, by the way, uh, for anyone who's new here. Uh, you can get prints and stickers and stuff of the kinds of gubbins that I get up to um, if you would like to. No pressure, obviously, but it's there if you want. Um, but yeah, this is this is a little burb. A sweet little kakapo. Um, he's an excellent guy, and we love him very much. And I feel like this foot would be slightly more in shadow than it is. So I'm going to just darken that down a little bit as well. That makes more sense. Um, and I'm also going to... So I've shouted myself out, but you know what I can also sh shout out? Is... The Kakapo Recovery Program. Because you can donate. The adoptions, I think, are closed for the moment, but you can just donate if you want to. Um, so I'm going to pop a link to that. If that is something that you would be interested in doing, I, I recommend it. It makes you feel real good and it, you know, like any support does help, um, support the bird population as well, which, uh, we really want to see them thriving and happy and good. Um, so that's there. I will try and remember to pop that in the discord as well when I am off stream. Uh, but for now... Uh, this is, this is Randy the Kakapo, who lives on Stewart Island. Um, he's a sweet bird and a good little guy, and I really enjoyed painting him today. I had a lot of fun. I hope you had fun hanging out. Thank you again, Devin, for the raid. I really appreciate it. Um, I need to go cook dinner because it's, I'm very late for dinner, but, uh, it was worth sticking around a bit, uh, worth to get this, to get this did. Um. I'm going to take a look and see who is around. We can maybe do a little raid on and <laughs> you need to send a copy to Raggy. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Oh no, Joe says if you wait like eight minutes, you can raid me. Oh, beans. Oh, beans. <laughs> oh, beans. Well now, well, now I've got to do it. So, um, I guess we're, we're, okay, we're vamping for the next seven to eight minutes, I suppose. Um, because <laughs> we love friend, friend of the channel, Joe. Um, and my salad is the work of probably about t 20 minutes at most. Um, Joe says, oh my god, you don't have to, to be fair, Joe, I haven't had a chance to raid you in quite a while, so I would like to do it. So, um... Quick, someone who has channel points request a terrible drawing. Ooh, yes. If anyone has a terrible drawing time redeem, you can do that. Um, and for anyone who's new here, allow me to explain. If you stick around long enough to amass 5,000 channel points, um, 
You can request a terrible drawing of a character or concept of your choosing for me to draw from memory or sight unseen in five minutes or less. Um, I don't know what to request, says Joe. Samantha, any ideas? All right. Okay, Joe's kicking it over to you, Samantha. So if you've got a you've got 100k points, holy heck. All right. It's terrible drawing time, friends. So let's bring back the terrible drawing canvas. Rangi, if you would like to just go take a rest over here. I, you know, I don't want to be self-congratulatory, but I'm really happy with that painting. I think it turned out pretty cute and I hope you like it too. Anyways, um, <laughs> a kiwi and a kakapo having a little date. Sharing a kiwi, says Samantha. That I can do. Okay, five minutes on the clock. Me remembering how to draw birds, including one that I literally just drew. Let's get the timer up. Five minutes on the clock starting now. <laughs> that is hecking adorable and I love it. Okay, where shall I put them? Um, there's, there's kind of dates happening over here, so I'll, I'll pop them in sort of date corner here. So, right. First things first, I will draw a significantly inferior drawing of a Kakapo. I'm going to try my best to still get Kakapo energy in here. But it will be much, much faster. <laughs> and I do apologize in advance. There we go. Oh, isn't it cute? Actually, no, I mean, it's, it's eyes look slightly, um, it's eye looks a little bit cursed, so I can, I can fix that. I think my pencil's getting a little bit dull, which makes it harder to get really good small details. I'm just going to give it a nice big eye, actually, so it kind of stands out better. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's, 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 that's reasonably cute, I think. Big, big old claw feet. Okay, and then what, what does, why are 90% of my terrible drawing redeems little guys having dates? Samantha, have you seen my stream? My entire stream is paintings of little guys going on dates. So to be fair, you are a hundo percent on brand with that. Like, genuinely. And here's a kiwi. At least I think from memory this is what a kiwi looks like, more or less, right? Right? I hope so. Um, definitely ignore the fact that I just put the kiwi about in chat. <laughs> Anyways. Um. And they've got little feet that go sort of like, plap, 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 plap. I just imagine them walking around going, plap, 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 plap. That's how they, that's how they walk. And talk. And they are eating... The kiwi has been sliced. It's fuzzy. There's the fuzzy exterior. And it's got its little seedy interior. And they are finding it absolutely delicious. And they're having a lovely date. Cassa says the stream is 90% just little guys. It really is. It really is. So many of my paintings are little guy content. These guys are little guys. You know? Um... 90% of the other things I paint are little guys. We've got a work in progress that I'm someday going to finish of two little guys on the beach having a little dance. They're having a little dance party. Those are just little guys. It's just, kiwis are basically little avocados in a beak and tiny feetsies. They really are. Look at it. It's just, just, a, little, it's just a little sphere with a tiny little head and the little feets. They're basically little avocados. They really are. I love them so much. <laughs> Anyways, here they are on their little date having a wonderful time and loving each other very much. And, um, yeah, I don't think I, I don't feel like there's any way, shape or form I can improve upon this. So, um, this is terrible drawing time. Actually, you know what, now that I'm looking at it in like close up, I feel like I can make this kiwi fruit look a little bit less horrifying. So hold up. And also maybe make it a little bit bigger like that. There's sort of a cross section of the fruit. And I'm just going to I'm just going to pop some texture on like the skin of it, I think. Will look more like a slightly less horrifying kiwi fruit. It's it is tiny. It is tiny and therefore it's not very good, but there we go. They're enjoying a delicious kiwi that doesn't look super scary now. Um I hope that's good. And uh 
<laughs> That's terrible drawing time. I don't know if Joe's still here because uh, Joe might be getting ready to stream because we are going to be raiding out to Joe's stream very imminently. But uh, there we are. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I hope you're happy, Samantha slash Joe. <laughs> Nearly ready, says Joe. No pressure. Absolutely no pressure. Um, but we will, we will go, we will go raid when you are, when you are live. Um, and the fun will continue over in the land of Joe stream. If you're not, I'm, you know what? I'm just going to shout out Joe as well. Uh, cause I've known Joe for a very long time and, uh, she's great. And we are very, very glad to know Joe. <laughs> Anyways. Um. That was fun. What was the other terrible drawing we did today? Because we did another terrible drawing. Oh, yeah, it was the, uh, it was the, uh, it was the Robo Dinosaur, which I believe is not a canonical re Robo Dinosaur from Horizon Zero Dawn or Forbidden West, but should be. Because, I don't know, they need, they, they need even more dinosaurs. I have never played a Horizon game, but I'm given to understand that, uh, that they're fun. There's Robo Dinos. Love that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm really, I, we finished this in a single stream. Now this is a longer, this is longer than I normally go on for in a stream. In fact, I've gone on for an extra hour, but, um, severely lacking sauropods in sauropods, those games, they really need to get on that and correct it. But, um, but yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, what am I doing for the rest of the night? I'm probably, you know what, this is, this is silly, but I'm probably going to play some more Stardew Valley. I've got things I should probably be working on, but I'm probably going to play more Stardew Valley. <laughs> um, cause I could also use a bit of a, just, they have giant robo T-Rexes. They are adorable. Oh, I want to befriend the T-Rex. I don't know how befriendable the T-Rex is, but I would like to. Um, very much I would like to. I think that sounds lovely. Anyways, um, oh, would you look at that? Somebody's live. <laughs> Somebody has just gone live. So we're gonna, we're gonna get that raid in a progress. I'm gonna pop a generic raid message in the chat. And just to confuse matters... I'm going to use a kiwi emote because I don't have a kakapo emote yet, but now I kind of feel like I should bake one. Um, if that's something you would like to see, that that might be in the future. Anyway, there's a generic raid message. If you have the generic, if you have the emotes, feel free to grab the emotes. If you don't have the emotes, feel free to just say generic raid message. Um, regardless, I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I know it's been a weirdly long stream, um, but I was really happy to do this. And also to kind of make up for the fact that I'm going to be away for a couple of days doing holiday stuff. So uh, I'll be back sometime next week. And I hope you have a good weekend. In the meantime, um, I, hope that, uh, I hope that you have a good evening and uh, you're all breathtaking. And I hope to see you again soon. And thank you all for hanging out with me today. It's been a lot of fun. Joe's going to be so surprised when you come in with the raid of the generic ra raid message kiwis. I know. She'll, she was not going to know what hit her. What the heck? Anyways, thank you so much for watching. And uh, good goodbye, everyone. And a good night. And good. Where's the mute button? There's the mute button. Okay. Good night, everybody.